Hello guys and welcome back to the finals of the Clan Wars Invitational Tournament between Fairy against Matthew Smirk, Goblins against Elves on the map Forts of Eisen in the Best of Five series. Yeah. Losers finals, the winner gets the chance to play Irby in grand finals. Uh, Fairy uh, played against Irby in the upper bracket and they played a close five game series that Irby Irby won and so Fairy's, you know, trying to fight to get get his rematch, get revenge. Yeah, I mean on the on the left side of the map we have the pink goblin player Fairy and on the right side his opening is the green Elvin player Matthew Smirk. Uh, this command already exists, Panther. All you need to do is exclamation mark uh, Rise of the Witch King, you know, R O C W K. Then it's gonna show up. Alright, um yeah. Two tunnels this time again, the same start here from Mephis, early barracks. He's gonna go to the creep at the bottom right side. And the mm -hmm. first goblin cave. What are you expecting from Fairy this game? Is he gonna spam many, many goblins at the beginning? Uh, yeah, I think that he he wants to get to about three caves. He wants to be able to f to flood the map and, and kind of gain, gain control around uh, the elves' base. It's gonna be tricky for him to dive trees, but what he can do with his numbers advantage is sort of prevent Fairy from pushing out, and and one thing that he can do that's proactive in this early game is if he can sniff out where the Elven player is trying to creep, and he can interrupt the creeping or steal steal the creep gold. That can really set the Elven player behind it and help the Goblin player uh, be established for for victory later. Though it is very tricky to to finish an Elf as Goblins, it's definitely possible. I'm actually expecting at least three goblin caves this time from fairy and I would like to see also like a transition to the spider spider link spider riders mm -hmm. um that's gonna force Mephi to make multiple pikemen and then it's also about the positioning you know if you don't pay attention for a single second spider riders can actually trample your trample down your backline and that can change the outcome I mean by spamming only goblins I doubt that this is gonna be enough to finish an elven player who's gonna mainly spam those Lorian Arches, and that's gonna be indeed his second unit choice from the Barracks. Um, he's gonna be ready to defend himself, most likely. Yeah, so Fairy is is checking this this warg here for, uh, on the side of Maddie's Mercs, and he has a forward tunnel near near the other one. It looks like he's running straight towards this other warg there, so he's he's definitely trying to, to catch and interrupt uh, this creeping, and one goblin warrior on it's the Mifflon Sentry. I mean, it, it does well. Uh, sword beat pikes, but the Maddie sending this archer to protect it. Um, yeah. Playing slow, I think, is the right call for Maddie here, too. He should be able to secure this creep. He needs to be careful, though, with those pikemen to not lose them, because now it's a 1v2 situation. Uh, Powerpoint-wise, Rolling Call is available for the Elven player, and the Goblin player didn't pick anything just yet. So he can go for the Warchant, he can go for the Cave Bats. I would say Warchant would be the better play at the beginning. Um, he was able to take down the Mifflons, and I think that's worth it, you know, you, you know, remember, your goblins, they cost only 100 each, so if you trade them one for one against the sentry units, then it's totally worth it. You also get yeah, more power points. And he, and he interrupted the creep, and with the change to version 8.3, 8 this, uh, this Lorian archer can't finish the creep, so even though Fairy doesn't secure it for himself, he prevents Matty from getting that free 200 gold early, he's gonna have to build another unit, commit it to this Warg Lair, and while he's doing this, he's gonna get two Warg Lairs himself, so he's gonna have two successful creeps versus Matty's, you know, potential one, he could even try and interrupt it again, so this is a huge win for Fairy, I have to say. Yeah, and at the same time, Matthew is going for the stables and going immediately for the upgrades to level 2. So he's gonna get those Lindon Horse Arch units on the field, guys. Um, Matty is one of the only Elven players that seems to really, really like the Lindons. Even in, in 1v1s, we saw him use it against uh, Kamul to counter uh, an Angmar uh, dog spam. And yeah, and it, it's I, I really like it because you don't you don't see Elves play with the Lindon Horse Archers very much in 1v1. So I, I'm a big fan. Yeah, I like this also. I mean, it's something different than, you know, having those big armies based on Lorian Arches and Mif uh, Mirkwoods. Even though Mirkwoods is in his name even, you know. I was mm -hmm. expecting uh, more Mirkwoods from him, but I like that. I think it's also really hard to predict for, for the Goblin player Fairy. Um, he's not gonna predict those Linden har Horse Arches that early into the game. Yeah, and the, the Lindens do well against the Spiderlings, and, and Fairy has gone for uh, almost like a safety spider pit, getting only two caves to, to one spider pit, because he knows that 
he has to be able to protect himself from cavalry of some sort. And I actually have never really seen Spiderlings uh, taking on the Linden Horse Archers, so I'm, I'm really excited. Ooh. And what happened, by the way, is just, you know, Fairy used Warchant here off screen, so the Alvin player didn't see the Warchant being used. Uh, he doesn't see them glowing just like we do. And the Horse Archers are here now, they're gonna go for a Trample. Spiderlings, they gotta be careful. And this attack won't be that successful. Oh, but you need to be careful with those horse archers, by the way. When there are too many goblins, you don't want to dive in them by trampling them. You want to look for this flank damage so you can get away without taking too much damage in exchange. This yeah. is a, a, this is exactly the kind of engagement that Fairy needs to keep taking, though, because this this force here that's distracting all of Maddie's forces isn't going to do anything. But what it is succeeding in doing is pulling Maddie away, and he's going to get get a, a, a one of the first three trees that have been built by. By the elf player he's kill it. this is this is so big it's so hard for a goblin to, to ever get hit sink his teeth into these first three trees and so this is just a massive win for him yeah um, very well done here from fairy tunnel. yeah and fairy during all this time is pretty much untouched he's now going for the fissure so we're gonna expect some half troll pikemen and half troll swordsmen both are gonna be great against those lindon horse archers by the way uh remember those half troll swordsmen they are really good against calf I mean, this one can actually shoot from a safe distance, but the damage output is not that great, especially not on those tanky units like half Um mm -hmm. Spider Pit is still level 1 only, and he actually is playing only with two Goblin Caves, by the way, boys. He has two Barrow expansions to increase his command points by 150. That's why he has, right now, 600 command points available against 400. Uh, in terms of power points, the Alvin player is slightly ahead, but it's nothing too crazy. Um, he's in a defensive mode right now, he can't really push forwards, but he's trying to do that, I think. Now he needs to retreat again. Uh, Warchan is on cooldown, Rallying Call is available though. Yeah, uh, Fairies pushing with this force in the bottom, uh, probably won't get anything. There's two, there's two units of cavalry on, on the field, but it is opening up uh, this lane coming from the north uh, to try and look for tree kills elsewhere but this potential push from fairy could be devastating especially with the rally call like you pointed out and he's gonna take down this malon tree by the way because um wow Mephi was not trampling them down for some reason and using the attack range you know from a safe distance when you just right click on them they're gonna just shoot so you need to you know micro rounds to trample them down he could have saved that by the way and it looks like he's gonna even lose a builder potentially here. Never mind. And look at this. He took down again two Malone trees from Mephis. And now it's gonna depend so much on the push from the Elven player. How much damage will he be able to deal? Mm. And I don't know about focusing down a Goblin Cave. You need to try to take down these tunnels as fast as possible. Cave pads yeah, will I be agree. used. He's gonna lose a tunnel and... Uh, or he's gonna lose a cave and potentially a tunnel. I, I don't think he's going to lose the tunnel. Um, e even with losing that cave, I think that everything that's happened uh, in the last, you know, few seconds massively benefits the, the goblin player. And this half troll swordsman has, has arrived just in time. Yeah, and yeah, kind of questionable move here from the Alvin player, to be honest, focusing down the cave. I mean, he has still one cave up, and it's not like he's spamming more and more goblins. He's actually making the transition now to the fissure and the spider pit. And during all this time, he was also forced to use heal. He doesn't have a well just yet on the field. That means those horse archers, they can't heal up. And as always, those half troll swordsmen, they can't get trampled down. Um, yeah. I mean, if you take a look into the command points and power points, Fairy has 725 command points available. I mean... One of the reasons for that is he gets gaining uh, 150 from those expansions, right? He has four yeah. power points collected after cave pets and war chant. On the other side, 450 command points only for Mephis. He is going for the second barracks, but can he afford that? That's the question. Uh, four power points after rallying call and heal. And yeah, he's struggling command points wise because he lost pretty much all his early Malon trees. There is not yeah, a single only... one which is all about to hit level 2. Hmm. On the other side, we have two level 2 tunnels now uh, for the Goblin player, you know? That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, he has a massive bleed right now. And they are complaining about legs, by the way, guys. <laughs> the classic. Um, <laughs> so, 
the, the fun thing, an interesting thing about this matchup is is that the Goblin player definitely winning. Like, look at the amount of resource income he has versus the Elven player. He's he's managed to knock down some of these trees, but it's still very very. He's in the driver's seat, but a mistake that he can make and a lot of goblins will make uh, after having a successful early game is they'll be too aggressive. Uh, what Fairy needs to do to close this game out with the lead that he has is to play slow and calculated, to try and slowly uh, encircle his base forward tunnels are good at that try and fill out the cp because again he has so much more available uh command points versus the elven player so he has to be able to really really overwhelm the elf uh in in smart coordinated pushes um and the way the elf player comes back into this is the goblin commits too much to aggression without killing uh without you know having successful pushes and he gets tons of power points that help sort of slingshot him back back into the game so yeah that's, true. That's what we're and right. also the unit advantage gonna matter so much um you know if you push all the time and if you end up losing all your units and the elven player saves his units all the time you know you will have a huge unit advantage on the field and the only good thing for the goblin player right now in my opinion is that this army from the elves is not gonna be uh, really effective, you know, when it comes to take down this, those structures, right? So this horse archers, this pikemen, I mean, he doesn't have any pikemen. He has only, I see only one, you know? Mm -hmm. And the damage output on those structures is gonna be kinda limited. But again, you are right, you need to make sure to not lose too much by trying to overcommit. So he's gonna be able to take down another Malon tree, which is really good. Spiderlings mm -hmm. are taking down those archers. Maybe the way to go is group a big army, you know, use your unit advantage instead of going for the more for more goblins, maybe try to spam multiple half throw swordsmen. Mm -hmm. Again, they can't get trampled down, they are quite tanky. And if you make a big war chant play, you can actually do some work. Yeah, with only two Mithlon sentries on it, another option he can go is is to try to go to spider riders. But anything that the goblin uh Everything that the goblin needs to to truly finish this game is going to be quite expensive. Um, one of the sometimes it feels like you need you almost need giants to beat even a limping elf, but surprisingly, it, it, if magic commits this force uh, stops you know focusing on defense, then the goblin player is just going to continue to pick him apart. Mm, and fairy is building even an arrow expansion here in his fortress, which is kind of interesting. Mm, yeah, I mean, to be honest, he has the time and the money income he needs. So he can oh, do yeah. whatever he wants. And right now, he has more than double... Uh, he has more than double command points. But again, Elven player now has 10 power points after rallying call and heal. That means he can go for the mist, which is gonna be the case. On the other side, we have 9 power points collected by the Goblin player Fairy after Keith Bats and Warchan. So yes, uh, indeed, the Elven player is slightly ahead in terms of power points. And it's gonna be even more and more as he manages to kill more and more units with all those pushes. But luckily, the Goblin player Fairy is also able to take down some of those structures all the time. Mm -hmm. Really exciting uh, high action play. Like, uh, Fairy is playing playing so well, it's so good to see. Um, I'm really curious to see what he does with these 10 power points because traditionally, you know, uh, players like to take the Ling summon, which does, which can do well at uh, trapping uh, the cavalry and, and hunting for resource kills. But he's done such a good job uh, without the Ling summon at killing these trees that he might try and go for a big push with Wildman summon, or the most conservative thing would be scavenger. Oh, but he takes the Ling's. Interesting. Yep. See if he'll try to trap these cavalry. Yeah, maybe. Oh, he gotta be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Never mind, he's actually getting away. I was kind of lucky that they didn't get slowed that much. Normally, when mm. you trample that deep, they're gonna be get they're gonna get super slowed, and you know you really struggle a lot. Oh, he's gonna trap them. All right, miss will be used, and spider ally special summon will be also used. So um, even e even with mist and the rally call here, this is not a this is not a good fight for the elf to take. He's gonna lose his whole infantry, and this is gonna open him up. Like he's gonna have to. Uh, you know, he manages to pull the two Lindens away, uh, and so he's gonna have to use them, like, masterfully to not, uh, basically take massive damage here on this, on this return push. Uh, you know, two half-troll swordsmen, nothing to sniff at. Yeah, and I think, uh, this fight was not even close, by the way, so, um, no. he doesn't have any, I mean, he has one Loren Archer Battalion, he has a statue in the back, though, for the, for the buff, 
Um, but cave pets are still flying around, so he needs to use them to negate the leadership. Um, but it looks like he doesn't want to even fight, so he want to just focus down the structures, which is the right call. Try to take mm -hmm. down as much as you can while the spiderlings are still on the field. They are quite strong against the structures, by the way. Another Malone tree will be taken down. And during all this time, he has also now some lumber mills to even increase his resource income more. He's gonna get so much money now with 850 command points and 3 lumber mills. Ooh, Glorfindel for the Elven player. I mean, that's that's the right decision because that's sort of the best thing he, he could get. Um, these half-troll swordsmen are gonna have a hard time uh, doing much whenever Glorfindel is near them. You see him just sort of like splash even before the archers uh, were shooting. Um, yeah, I, I love the lumber mills. Um, this is still this is still on a knife's edge for the goblin player. He's been winning. He's doing great work so far. But again, just to reiterate, he can be too aggressive and he can let the elf come back into this game by you know just giving him too many power points and and now experience to the Glorfindel. But it's so curious to me that uh, Maddie keeps crossing uh, mid map after he successfully you know finally repels these attacks. Like this okay. is not going to end well for the elf. Now he has also half troll pikemen on the field. They're gonna be very effective against Glorfindel, by the way. They are quite strong against heroes, um, especially when they are buffed. And there is also Azok on the field, boys. Uh, once he gets level 4 with the great battle rage, he can also do some great work. And with the level 2, with the pillage, you can also get so much resources. Uh, we have some goblin arches in the back, even. Um, I think the breaking point of this game could be the, you know, when the Elven player manages to get the giant eagle from the fortress. We know that uh, Goblin faction is kind of struggling to take down those flyers. I mean, you need to have multiple Goblin archers on the field to take them down. Mm -hmm. And with the eagle, you can also focus on the map control a bit more. For sure. Um, really curiously, Fairy is upgrading his fortress. I, I think he might be going for the big uh, fortress Drake again, like he did uh, against Irby. Um, but smart to pull this army back. It would have surely just oh, been Glorfindel has to be careful. Ooh. Okay, look the damage out, but that's what I was talking about. When he's not level three, uh, he can't really face against that, especially because the buff was still active on them. By the way, the war chant. Mm, yeah, maybe. A Goblin King could be a great choice, you know, what do you think? You know, for the leadership for those units, for the buff yeah, with the I, Skull Totem? Yeah, I think that the leadership on the Marauders is almost necessary to be able to close this game out. Because you, you can see how, even with all of the impetus that he has, how hard it is to sort of penetrate into the inner part of, of the Elven base. Um, uh, and, yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see what, what Fairy is doing, because I don't think he's going uh, Gorkil and he has access to the... Drake, which, yeah, I just, I don't know if that's gonna work out. I would love that if it does. Why are Drake is coming? <laughs> Why are Drake is coming from the Fortress, boys? I mean, that's something we don't see that quite often, as you know. Um, I mean, in, lead in late game, the leadership with the Darkness, I mean, the spell can also do so much. Mm. Uh, Tainted Line yes. will be used uh, for the buff. Like, Glorfindel is getting a lot of kills here. He's really close to that level 3 power spike with the Bleed of Purity. Uh, he's gonna be very hard to take down, as you know. And the fact that he's not being mounted, you know, makes him also really hard to take down for those pikemen. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, uh, you know, Fairy is still being able to take down some of those structures, but look at this. Ma Matthew now has also a decent amount of command points. 600 plus command points available for the Elven player. Almost 12 power points collected after, after running call, heal and mist. On the other side, we have full command points for the Goblin player. I mean, the fact that he has those two Barrow expansions is helping him out a lot, but also the fact that he has Lumber Mills on the fields and a lot of level 3 tunnels, it's actually great. And he's going again for a defensive expansion around his fortress. This time a giant expansion, which is kind of questionable. I mean, his side of the map was not touched once so far. Why is he so scared? Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure. I mean, he he might be worried about just trying to defend from from cavalry coming in. Ooh, the Drake is out. Um, yeah, I, I think that if you want defense on the fortress, the most efficient thing for him would be like one spider spiderling expansion to protect uh, dives on onto your inner inner things, and then and then he's just going to need arrow towers for the eventual eagle and Glorfindel combo. And 
you know, you called it earlier, Shanks, the Eagle is on its way too. So we have both four upgrade units coming out. Yeah. Very exciting. I feel like Eagle is a great choice now because again, he doesn't have, you know, he doesn't have anything to deal with him. So with the Eagle, he will be winning those fights easy. And once he's leveled four, I think with the Wing Blast, he can actually do so much work. We have already seen this one in the same matchup here at the river when Rambo was playing with the with the elves against goblins against fairy I think it was uh, the eagle was able to take down everything uh, but there is a fire drake now and I'm really curious about how much damage he will be how much impact he will have on this game there's only one Lorian one and a half Lorian archers in this force so this drake I think can uh, really help uh, swing this fight in his favor and usually it's really bad for the goblin uh, player to sort of like clump into one into one group against an elf um, and he is splitting his forces too but but with that giant meat shield to sort of enable the fire drake to to you know get fire fire breaths in um, without tanking everything uh, it, that is a situation where he can group but a little bit of a stall in action here I mean this is a final of the loser brackets guys yes. this is still being a final um, and the Grand Finals is going to be obviously the winner of this game against RB right after this series, by the way. Mm. Alright, uh, Fire Drake didn't do anything just yet. You want to play a bit more careful with them, with him. I mean, he's quite squishy. He deals a lot of damage, as we as we know. Uh, but he is not able to tank and sustain too much damage from the Alvin player. That is a Glorfindel who is all about to hit level 3. And now we have a Giant's Eagle joining the battlefield for the Alvin player. And that's going to be, I think... You know, really difficult now for the Goblin player Fairy to deal with that beast. Um, yeah, but hmm. I mean, he didn't see him, so he doesn't have enough units. He has only two Goblin archers, and that's not gonna be enough, obviously. Let's. I, I'm curious about how much damage he will be able to deal to the Drake. Not much, okay. It's fair. So, I mean, would be a shame if you take him down with three hits. Yeah. Um, fairy saw the eagle expansion and has been building lots of archers and he's kind of like waiting here um yeah like it feels like he he he, he wants the eagle to he's expecting the eagle to be used to harass his tunnels and he's trying to trap him which would be a huge pickup if he can get this eagle off the board really quickly tower going up for maddie's mercs he wants to control mid map yeah and, and look fight. at this look at this experience he was already Fire able arrow. to gain Higher arrows already for fairy. Oh my goodness. Okay, that's gonna be Fiesta. Okay, miss will be used, and the eagle's taking way too, way too much damage here. The fire drake is in between, and he's all about to hit level 5. Inferno is gonna be unlocked pretty soon, and Mephi is being surrounded. And eagle now has to go away because the fire arrow upgrades on those uh, goblin arches is gonna do some work, but more eagles are coming. Oof. Now we have so three eagles. eagles. Oh, that's <laughs> Fiesta right there. I mean, you need to just make sure to take down this eagle from the from the fortress if you can. But it's easier said than done. There are so many eagles, and they keep knocking your units down all the time, so your units are not able to shoot them down. And the eagle will be able to get away. Glorfindel, in the meantime, was able to get level four. Fire Drake is gonna be the target from those eagles. Level five Fire Drake already. If yeah. he can keep this Fire Drake alive and, and outlast this Eagle Summon, he's in such good position. Yeah. He also has so much money to try and transition, but I don't think this Drake is going to make it out alive. No. Uses Inferno, Kamikaze Inferno. What a he's gonna use it there. He's going to use it. <laughs> I hope he's going to revive his uh, Fire Drake, by the way. I mean, it's yeah, going to be only level one when he comes out again, so we need to level him up again. Uh, on the other side, um, Mephi was able to save his eagle, and once with level 5, the Wing Blast is going to be ready. <clears throat> and Fairy is going for the second Fissure now. Mm. He needs... The, the only way that he can end this game is with lots of Giants and and lots of buffed half trolls. Um, the Fire Arrow upgrade from, from Fairy is 100% necessary for him to be able to do anything to this Eagle, so it was a really heads-up play to him, but this is what I mean. Like, Fairy still 100% in the driver's seat in this matchup. Uh, Maddie has done a good job of recovering with uh, <laughs> with the tower. Um, is going to be much harder for Fairy to harass and punish. Um, but yeah, it, it it just it takes a lot for the goblin player to to finish this game. A very passive game. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of it kind of makes sense, right? So, uh, whoever wins that is gonna have guaranteed one hundred dollars. So, I mean, you don't want to make too many mistakes, 
and you want to play, play a bit more passive and rely on the mistakes your opponent is going to make, hopefully. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, maybe um, Barry was trying all the time to deal the damage he needed, but, you know, Mephi was always in the game. He was never out of the game. He was always able to keep his units alive. He was always able to... Oh, okay. Hey, look at this. Look at this yell from the eagle. Not wow. even close, baby. <laughs> Wow. Oh, that's so more close. more luck. Oh my god, look. Oh he got taken down by the by the <gasps> by the poison. poison. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. And because of the Azok being around, Goblin player was getting 250 uh, gold from that, by the way. Awesome. Okay, he has, watch out oh, he on your earth. face! Beautiful man! Look this watch out. Oh what a turnaround once again. Holy moly guys, look at this. It's crazy. So smart. Ooh, Glorfindel has been tossed into the army. Does uh -oh. he have the presence of mind uh -oh. to finish him off? Oh, heal was used. The half trolls aren't doing anything. Come on. Oh, he got knocked down again from the Watcher. The Watcher is crazy, by the way. I love the Watcher. Oh no, that was that was Fiesta right there. I mean, the Eagle got just with the last tick of the poison arrows from the Goblin Archers. The Watch is yeah. gonna be gone now, but Mephi doesn't have much left anymore, guys. I see only yeah. one archer, half, you know, almost a death battalion of Linden horse archers. Warchan was used. Um, he has now some Revender Lancers on the field as well. Elrond is here. <laughs> oh man. The level 3 Malon tree is gonna go down potentially here. And the good thing is about those Goblin Archers with the Fire Arrow upgrade, they also gonna deal decent amount of damage to structures. Um, I mean. He's Matty is going to survive. Yeah, uh, he's going to survive, the, definitely. The, her the heroes are leveling. I think it was a huge missed opportunity. Everything that happened was so uh, w was so awesome from Fairy. So many uh, heads-up plays one after another with the Watcher. The fact that he didn't get the Glorfindel there when I feel like 100% he could have is a huge mistake. Ooh, but the Fire Drake, yeah. Daddy Drake is back here. He's back, and look at this experience. He's level 3 already from killing one Malon tree. That's crazy how fast he's able to level up look level three and a half already guys level five it's gonna be very close by the way and elrond on the other side is level two and the giant eagle is also back in the business mm. and yeah the fire drake is gonna burn those arches down he's level four now only one level away from getting the inferno inferno can deal so much damage Barry has not uh, has not stopped putting pressure on him ever since ever since you know the that big fight with uh, the Elven Mist on Fairy. Elegias just resubscribed for four months. Ahoy! Props. Thank you so much for the resub for four months, random guy. I appreciate it. Elegias. Mm. Um, the fire trick is still putting in so much work. He's almost level five. Might be able to take down this Malon tree. Fairy Let's has see. purchased, uh, does have heavy armor, scavenged armor for his troops. That's that's good. He's gonna need he's gonna need the big, fully upgraded uh, half troll push to really finish this. He has giants on the field too. Ooh, oh. I'm excited. The fire trick has been taken down by Glorfindel, by the way, but he was able to take down another level three Malon tree here from uh, from Mephi. and Mephi is again dropping below 500. Command points on the other side. Fairy is sitting now for a while on full command points. It's an incredible amount of resource income. The giant is taking down the tower, no big deal. And the only things are, uh, you know, what, what is left for the Alvin player is Elrond, Glorfindel, and this giant's eagle. He's he's only 11 points away from his 25 power point, which is something that could 100%, you know, reset this game massively. Ooh. But but also Goblin Play is only 12 power points away from that. And never mind, he's gonna go for the Wildman of Dunland Special Summon now, on top of the Archers, to win the fights. He doesn't count on that. Eagle has to disengage, Ooh. but we will have Cloud Break to stun the enemy units. You're get, you're gonna see massive level ups here from Glorfindel and Elrond on these stun stun troops, and he has two heals available. This yeah. can get overwhelming quick once you have all of these Elven heroes. Um, so true. Uh, Ooh, Ling summoned to harass. Very good. Very heads up play. There's not gonna be much. He's gonna at least have to pull the eagle. Yeah, eagle's pulled. And he's um, back. Yeah, mm. Elrond is level 4, guys. Glorfindel is almost level 6. Um, Azok on the other side is level 4. 
Uh, the eagle is taking care of those by the special summon. But they were able to take down one of those level 2 Malone trees. And yeah, I mean, the thing is that... Mephi lost so many Malone trees, now he needs to actually rebuild them in order to be able to make more units. So because he's going to be command points capped pretty soon. Going back to what, what you said earlier about how you wanted to see Goracle come out, I think that that was, you know, really smart of you to point out because th this is another really, really tricky part. We were right on the cusp of Fairy breaking the elf's back uh, just a few minutes ago, but he didn't quite do it, and now... Uh, Maddie has these two really strong heroes leveling that give him a late game win condition with the tornado and what he and what Matt, uh, what fairy needs to be able to to yeah. kill these heroes is Gorkil's leadership plus these upgraded half trolls and, and, he doesn't and, and also Gorkil. really important to mention Gorkil with the skull totem is not only buffing you but also giving you fear resist and that means the cloud break wouldn't stun those units when Gorkil would yeah. be around and that th this fight look would look completely different by the way without you know mm. them being stunned Remember, Gorkil yeah. needs to only be level 2 for that, and once he's level 4, he will be having the double buff with the leadership, so you can make those units even stronger than that. And with that, and the Tainted Land, and the Warchan, you have pretty much buff all the time for your units, you know? Mm -hmm. That would be the way to go. He costs only 1,800, but, I mean, it's nothing he can't afford. He has so much money, he can still go oh, for yeah. it. Yeah. 100% agree. Ooh, the, the Eagle's getting chunked out, which is good. You see the first battalion of Mercs, finally, for the Elven player. Took finally. And, yeah, I mean, on the other side, you know, the Elven player doesn't have anything, actually, to protect those arches. So maybe getting some of those Spider Riders on the field, finally, could actually do some work. And you can also, yeah. you know, use the bow and uh, use the Poison Blades. You can even buy fire. Oh, the Eagle? Never mind. He's gonna get away. Um, you can also, you know, damage the eagle with the fire arrow upgrades on the spider riders. You have the mobility, you can trample them down, force the Alvin player to make more and more pikemen. You know, spend his command points for that and money. Azok is, I don't know what Azok is doing right there. Okay, he wanna 1v5 the army. It's kinda questionable. There are some midpoots in the back and he's not very tanky even with the great battle reach. He's only gaining 40% uh, increased armor, and that's not gonna be enough, and Azok will be taken down, boys. Yeah, you hate to see it, especially since you really need to, to protect your Azog, because you have to figure out a way to get rid of these heroes. Elrond is level 5, Glorfindel is level 6. It's gonna be so hard for him to end once he has these, uh, once he has access to Tornado, but let's see how the Drake does against these heroes. <clears throat> and what you can now do with Elrond is also the restoration with level 5, right? So you can, for example, use it on Glorfindel, so he gets the Blade of Purity back. Mm-hmm, exactly. Um, boy, I think that this game is gonna come down to whoever gets their 25 power point first and who uses it better, because I don't see Fairy having the ability to, tr to to really close this game out until he has the Balrog summon with a big push. But that can immediately be erased or the opposite uh, done to him as well. With these two heroes, with uh, with a with a solar flare or or a flood. Ooh, yeah, it's anybody's game still. Yeah, I think every every uh, this game is still open. I mean, we gotta also agree that. Barry is going for the for the Dragoff, by the way, guys. He has almost the money for that. He has over 4,000 collected. So maybe... I mean, Dragoff is going to do a great job against this Giant Eagle. It's going to do a great job against the Giant Eagle. A lot of people don't like to get Drogoth in this matchup because obviously you're afraid of the really strong archers from the elves. But I think he's almost necessary the longer the game goes. And yep. uh, to borrow oh. parlance from... You <laughs> see that? He's burning those Mirkwoods with the Fire Drake. Oh, no wow. big deal. Elrond and Glorfindel will be taking them, taking him down, but he dealt so much damage. And Vern will be special summons now. Let's see how much damage he will be able to deal. And I don't like this, man. He, they are wasting so much power points instead of yeah. going for the 25, you know? I, I don't think the worm is going to be enough to win the game. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't like it at all. If he can kill the heroes, I guess it's good, but I don't think that's going to happen. No. I mean, the worm is not dealing too much damage. And the heroes. Just, and just gonna die immediately to the heroes. Yeah. Go down. And just leveling them up, you know. Um, Tragic. Elrond is almost level 6 now, and Glorfindel is almost level 7. Imagine Glorfindel being able to get level 10. The starlight is so insane. Yeah, this is... It feels like Fairy... He's done such a good job. He's made so many good decisions on top of good decisions. But some of it... Uh, some of this here, it feels like it's slipping away. Um, especially with that worm summon, man. Uh, you know, he's he would only be what is it? I'm bad at math, but only a few points away from Balrog if he doesn't commit those 
those 15 power points. Yeah, big yeah. Uh, tilt move, I think. Um, and for the next fight, the Giant Eagle Special Summon is going to be ready for the Alpine player Mephis, guys. And he has still his eagle alive, so he will have three eagles flying around. On the other side, we will have um, Drogov joining the fight pretty soon. And the Eagle Special Summon is here now. Uh, but the Spider Riders are actually getting a beautiful trample off on, into the back line. They are taking down many archers. Uh, he has still many, many goblin archers on the field. And yeah, I mean, actually, you know, what's the win condition here from the Alvin player? Those heroes, definitely, they have so much impact the later the game goes and the more level they have. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of scary that Elrond is all about it level 7. He's only one level away from that, guys. Terrifying. Um, and, you know, there was still the Troll Creep at the top right side, by the way, and the uh, Giant Eagle is taking it down. And another win fight here. He was also able to take down the Giant. And the Alvin player is only 3 power points away from the big one. On the 25. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for the follows, by the way, guys. I really appreciate it. And welcome to the stream. The, you know, the goblin player. Uh, all you the can use flute on the on the fortress, you know, take down every expansion around it. And then you have Elrond and Glorfindel, really highly leveled. And then again, you know, you can use the Blade of Purity as soon as it runs off. You can use the Restoration to cast it again. So, yeah, he has Cloud Break and he has uh, the Enshrouding Mist. So he might go for Cloud Break, try and get to the 25, summon it on the fort, and then go for the all-in with the heroes on the fort to try and finish this right here. And it's and this is a really scary, uh, really scary for for Fairy since he has no big power point to to answer with here yeah. and no heroes to to defend. Um, but ooh, maybe oh, maybe watch doesn't... up. Oh yeah, in the middle, that's really good. He was able to take down almost everything from the Alvin player once again. That's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, these uh, heroes are really hard to deal with, you know? Look at this, level eight. He needs he needs to kill these heroes. I don't know what he's doing. He's, he's, is he, it feels like he's trying to dive. Oh, Cloud um, Break will be used. He has now the power points he needs and Flute is incoming. Why is he using the Flute? Uh, he's not using it just yet. Looks like he doesn't want to use it. Oh, look, Glorfindel got knocked back <laughs> from the Watcher just in time. The stun duration is gone now, and he was not able to take down anything with the Cloud Break, by the way. But the Fire Drake is off position once again, and he's being taken down by the Eagle slowly but surely. Um, the only good thing here, what could happen for Fairy, is if the Alvin player uses the Flute to take down the army, you know? Then he's gonna yeah. be in a safe spot again for a while. I almost feel like Maddie doesn't, might not know that. Oh, well, no, I, I shouldn't say that. But this is if I'm in Maddie's position there, I go for the all in there. I'm like exhausted after this game. I go for the flood on the fort, the tornado, and I just try and all in it with my heroes. So yeah. I think it's a lot more discipline from him with uh, the stakes of this match to you know to try and win a little more straight up. Okay, he's gonna go now for the foresight to get the vision, and he's looking for the flutes now, by the way, boys. We're gonna focus on the fortress here from the goblin player. The Alvin player has now the vision he needs. Oh, he didn't even use it. Never mind. He used it on his army, by the way. Okay. He didn't use it at all. Sorry, my bad, guys. So he has foresight still available. He just picked the power points. And now he's going for the push. Uh, Fire Drake is being taken down, like mentioned before, by the eagle. No big deal. Um... And yeah, no heroes on the side from the goblin player. I was really expecting Drogov on the field. It's, at some point, he had around 4,500 resources collected, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know what he went, uh, what he did with those resources. He has a lot of units in the back line. You, you see that? Spider Riders and Goblin Archers and Goblins. It feels like he expects the Flood here and he doesn't want his army to get wiped along, along with uh, the base, which is... Uh, really smart like he, he wants he wants to force the the elven player to kind of like pick between one you can either kill my army or my but not both which is very smart true Ooh, this lo big line of undefended archers Look these this. two fighter riders. <laughs> so oh, funny no. oh that's that's the satisfaction right there <laughs> look they're lined up like crazy you know thank you so much for the follow by the way sinis who white uh 1985 man appreciate it oh don't run into the don't ride into the spear man Okay, nice trample into the mid boots. I like it. Uh, by the way, Mephi is still only sitting on 500 command points, guys, since a while now. Unlike the goblin player, he has full command points the last 20 minutes. Yeah, okay. Good. I mean, every second, 
Um, Mephi is wasting. He's giving Fairy more and more power points, and he's also getting really close to the Balrog special summon. So he's actually yeah. only 8 power points away from that, which is not as much as you might think, because this is late game and you have now strong units on the field, killing them is gonna give you so much power points. Alone taking, the, taking down those Mirkwoods gave him so much power points right there. Mm. Um, I almost feel like it's gonna take a combination of power points for Fairy to successfully end okay, this Okay, there game. we go. Flute. That was a questionable flute, not gonna lie. Uh, mm. He didn't kill a single expansion and the fortress is still being in a safe spot. He has a lot of towers around it, so I don't think it's gonna be enough to take it down. What do you think? No. I think worst case scenario, he loses this level 3 uh, Fisher, but that's... Yeah, he's gonna lose the Ooh, Fisher. Oh, the, the tornado. Yeah, yeah, wow. He's okay. not gonna get the fortress kill here, though, so... Uh, there is no way he can Harry... get it. Yeah. Man. You know what I would like to see? You know, the fire, big fire drake from the fortress and then three small fire drakes from the Fisher level 3, you know? Like a fire drake army. That would be cool. Um, it... All of these, all of these half trolls just immediately dying to the Glorfindel splash before they even have a chance to get out. Yeah, that's, um, not, that's Azog, unfortunate. Azog needs he needs to he needs to get rid of these heroes somehow. And and just going back to that Gorkil decision to to not have Gorkil here, how different is this game if he has if he has Gorkil and Gorkil Stinger? Um, if his heroes are leveling side yeah. by side with the Elven in, ones, in, yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, imagine Gorkil being on the fields like twenty minutes ago, he would have. Mm -hmm. He would be really highly leveled, you know? He would maybe be even close to level 10, in which he can summon even more fire drakes. Oof. Does he okay. finally kill a hero? But that is an eagle, is man. I would like to see a wing blast right there. Use blank blast, maybe. The thing is, goblins are fast. Or oh, Atelas will be used. The thing is, the, the elven heroes are so fast, you know? You can't chase them. Or you can't catch them. Crazy. And they will be able yeah, to get yeah. away. Elrond almost level 9. And looks, guys, Glorfindel. And that's gonna be the first time we're gonna see. I gotta see. I'm gonna see his Starlight potentially in this game being used in a multiplayer game. Especially in a in a finals. I mean, yeah. this guy is literally all about to hit level 10, boys. That's crazy. He wasn't killed once. And I feel like the goblin player fairy was never trying to kill them as well, you know? Yeah, I agree. I agree with that assessment 100%. There were so many uh, times in this game where he could have killed Glorfindel, but like the the Elven player has had to be so efficient. Like, think about how little economy and how little available command points he has had, and how many waves after waves of these strong goblin troops he's managed to repel, all the while not losing these heroes. And and the fact that he's never had to rebuy them is the yeah. only thing that has kept him in this game. That's so true. That's so true, guys. And also the eagle use he has uh, on the field now for a while is all about to hit level 9. Um, he's putting in some nice work with him, never being idle, always taking down some of those tunnels, you know, trying to be annoying. And I can't see the same effect, you know, effect or impact from this uh, fire trick from Fairy. Uh, there are yeah. a lot of Mirkwoods and they're gonna try to take him down, by the way. Use Foresight and Rallying Call on them. And they're gonna hit like a truck on him. Look at this damage, man. That's crazy. This is good for Fairy. He's he's you know diving this uh, the base a little bit while the heroes are away. Though the eagle is probably going to be enough to to get rid of most of this. And okay. This Drake, oh the Drake! If you can get one fire breath off. Look this! Look this! He was trying to take down the end mood, and that's the wing blast I was talking about. Look this! They can move wow. forever. And cloud breaks done. So he really desperately wants to save this end mood. By the way. Wow. Because there is no other reason why you, uh, he was using it on the Wildman of Dunland specials, I mean, never mind. The Drake has been taken down, and he will be able to save this uh, end mood as well. Oh, the Worm. Oh, no. oh, nice one. Look, he's getting really close to the power points. He's only three power points away, guys. That can change the outcome of the game, literally, you know, if he gets the Balrog. He's it not going to be able to kill use. the fort. He's not going to be able to kill the fort without... Uh without heroes or, or something here even even with balrog like a balrog right here is only going to wipe production buildings and and maddie's wind condition is still out here with these heroes um this is looking this is so intense but man yeah i mean um for some reason fairy refuses to make heroes uh i don't know he has some money and all the time he needs actually 
He can literally go for Shilob even, if he wants to, yeah. you know? Yeah. Get to level 7 good. with the Poison Stinger that can actually deal exactly. so much damage. Yeah. Ooh, the Balrog special summon is incoming, boys. Are you ready for that? Let's see. Oh yeah, the level 2 barracks has been taken down. That means no more Mirk Woods any soon, though. That's really good. But the win condition are definitely those heroes. And we have Glorfindel the level 10 Starlight available, by the way. Okay, no more barracks. Um, can actually try to damage... Uh, maybe he should have used the Fire Whip on the Eagle. What do you think? I don't know how much damage it would deal to him, though. But... Yeah, man, I'm not sure. I, I think it does quite a bit. Um, I, I've never seen that interaction in all of my years of playing this game, I have to be honest with you. It just doesn't feel like Fairy has all of the things that he needs to take this for. but he's trying. Look, he's got half trolls coming in, he's got Azog with Battle Rage uh, available. Oh man, where's the Balrog going? Oh, he's trying to go for Builders? Yeah, no, he's gonna level try three. to level three, level 3, yes, to decrease his command points because Mephi has actually 750 command points available. A wing blast. Ooh, that's a fiesta right there, man. Look, they can't move. You're, you're gonna see Starlight right here, man. Yeah. Oh the whip on both heroes! If he can if he can get another whip and kill these heroes. Oh he used Atelas though. I mean heal. Oh but Elrond is taking way too much damage. Atelas is not available. He will be used now. Azok is gonna be taken down first. Okay, not he's not gonna be able to take down the fortress. The Balrog is gonna be gone pretty soon. There's the Starlight. Yeah, stunning the enemy units. Oh, Balrog? What was that? Did you guys oh, see that? that? <laughs> oh my god! Does he get the whip off? Oh nope. no, did you guys see that? He was still and then he teleported oh, wow. back, you know. Balrog is a magician. 5,000 gold available for the goblin player. There's. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about any troop production, just these two heroes and this yeah. eagle. All of the gold immediately disappears as he queues up troops and maybe yeah. he buys heroes, probably rebuys Azog. Look, uh, and the end special summon is gonna be ready from the Alvin player Mephi and, you know, with the ends and with these two strong heroes and they are definitely the MVPs of this game number one and that's only game number one, guys. Imagine every single game lasts that long. You know, oh, wow. and I had I have to go in the evening because it's Mother's Day today. You know, I need to spend the evening <laughs> with my mom. Oh man! And this eagle was paying off so much as well, guys. It's crazy. So good. Um, Elrond almost level ten. And Glorfindel is level ten. <laughs> there we go. Tornado will be used. Relevant. It's you also dealing so much damage to the structures, man. It's crazy. Okay. I, I would, I would, I would like to say that this game would look so much completely different if you know the Goblin player Fairy would also count on his he own heroes. You know, like, I mean, Shilob can do really good against them. If, I mean, she's yeah. expensive, but we have the money. You know, uh, Drogov could be a choice. Uh, God kills the Goblin King, definitely one of the first heroes you want to get on the field for the double leadership, double buff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that that Gorkil is is the biggest would have been the biggest difference maker to maybe try and close out this game. Yeah. Um, I, I think that we are getting to a point here where unless we have some more really spicy PowerPoint usage from the Elven player, I mean, he has Eagles, he has Ants, man. Does he go for the all-in with his two heroes on the fort with both summons? But, think he but, but, but look, you know, if he is trying that and if he fails and if he ends up losing his heroes, the game will be over for, for Mephi, you know? Because once yeah, his but... heroes are done, down. Look, Elrond. Elrond is dead. Elrond is dead, guys. Elrond oh, is just wow. has been taken down by the Half-Troll Swordman. Okay, that actually changes everything again. There is only Glorfindel, but he's way, way away from his from his sides. He was at the bottom left side of the map. And Elrond just randomly got taken down. He was yeah. on cooldown and you underestimate the damage from those Half-Troll Swordman. That's something you don't want to do. They're full upgrades. And they are taking down the Mirkwoods, no big deal. So there is barely anything left. He has triple barracks, but not the money he needs. He's running he out of cash. Yeah, he is running out of cash, and Fairy just keeps it coming. He might get to Dragon. He can finish the game with Dragon. Yeah. Wow. What yeah, a game he's change. only he's only uh, six power points away from that, guys. You know, that's not too far. And yeah, what a game. <laughs> what a game. I mean, end special summon is ready, but that's not gonna do anything for defensive purposes. You wanna take use it, obviously, to take down some of those structures. 
-hmm. Also really important to mention that Fairy, even though he was, you know, being pushed back all the time and being defended, but he has always a great map control. He has om almost like the entire game now 1,000 command points. Yeah. Never running out of money, you know? And always being able to deal some counter damage, always being able to take down those Malone trees, always being able to stall the game for a potential second attack, third attack. And he's now really close for the Dragon Special Summon. You just see Fairy not even bothering with archers anymore. He says, I'm wasting time and APM. I'm simply going to send endless hordes of fully upgraded half trolls and you're going to kill them, but they're going to get structure kills despite everything. And, and I am going to wear you down. And it yeah. seems like, like he is getting to the breaking point where Maddie can't can't last especially I mean, the, the resource practice. advantage is actually massive you know he can do that massive, he can spam yeah. so much and the watcher can also be used on those archers that's pretty much everything what he has left besides cloud Findel. he's gonna use Wildman of dunland special summon the cloud break is ready which will be used now to stun the units i mean azok is going for the fortress guys azok is going for the fortress i can't believe the the links got stunned even though they came out after interesting does he? Mirik Boots was used. I would uh, I would like to see a Watcher here maybe, but it's not worth it. I think there's only one Archer Battalion, so you don't need to do that. Um... You, you, you watch her near the fort and you hope that uh, he swings and, and attacks the fort to help you bring it down. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the Fortress is above 50% still. He's gonna get the Dragon, I think. He's really close and he has still some after Swordman attacking. Um... He's really close. Down. Eagle is uh, doing so much work. Eagle is also level 10. So many level 10 heroes in this game, man. That's crazy, guys, for the Elven player. And the only reason why he's not defeated now, why he was not defeated 20 minutes ago, are those heroes. Mm -hmm. And 100%. he lost one of them. He lost Glor he lost Elrond. And he's running out of money. He can't afford to revive him. Because, you know, the more levels, the more expensive, obviously. And Dragon, he has the power points now for that. He's gonna choose to summon Dragon. Let's see. Another and Starlight. Oh Watch up. No. Starlight. On the end. <laughs> okay, let's see. And the Dragon is coming right on top of the army, wiping out the entire army. What is left Elrond is, is back. only one Archer Battalion. Elrond is back in the business. Can the Dragon finish off this fortress? The fortress is not very healthy, you know? If he can get some damage done here, maybe with those half of swordsmen, he can maybe do it. Taking down the production buildings first. That means only one barracks is gonna be left. Elrond is getting knocked back from the Watcher. Watcher has to leave Middle Earth. Eagle level 10 is still alive. Looks like you wanna just kill the last barracks remaining in the Malon tree here. <laughs> and only 450 command points available. It's gonna be now 400 after losing this one. And yeah, he's being surrounded. He has, he has only level 1 Malon trees, by the way, guys. Not a single level 2. The flute is gonna be ready soon, so... Imagine Matthew being able to win this game still. That would be one of the, you know, crazy games ever, actually. Yeah, one of the best comebacks of all time. Uh, because, look, what's gonna happen, what could possibly happen is, he has now Elrond back, you know. Elrond is almost level 10, has his Whirlwind's ability available. He has eagle. Uh, he has end special summon ready. He has an eagle level ten still alive, and flute is coming up. So maybe, you know, even though I'm not even sure if he can win the game, even if he takes down the fortress. Mm -hmm. But I think he can take down the fortress really easily. You know, if he uses the flute to kill every expansion, and then uses his heroes and the eagle to take it down. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, if then he needs to leave his own side of the map pretty much unprotected. And the goblin player is attacking now from the bottom left side, so... Hmm. He's going for it. He's going for it. Flute was used. All expansions are gone. And special summon. Mephi is going inside the jeans, boys. He's, he's gonna have Worm just in time to kill these Ents, which is 100% the, the right thing to do. Yeah, but uh, even, even if you kill them, it's not gonna change. I mean, Glorfindel is gonna take it alone with Elrond. Yes. Uh, but he wants to summon the Worm quickly. He does, because Worm can maybe help kill these heroes after they go in for the skill. The fort is going to go down. Alright, the fortress is gone, guys. 
Uh, thank you so much for the follow, by the way, uh, V3 Mino. Appreciate it. Starlight once again from Glorfindel. Um, and the fortress is gone, guys. Look, 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 the swirl. <laughs> look, Azog is flying around. <laughs> Azog is in the air. It's so funny. And yeah, this is a one man army. This dude right there. Ooh, Crazy. some flare in the back. You see that? I think that might be game. I think Maddie might have done it. Yeah. I think so as well. He doesn't have much left anymore. He has two fissures, and if they go down, there are no more production buildings. That means the game will be automatically over. He has nothing to deal with the eagle here. He does manage to get a cave off up in the bottom left. Azog is going to go down. Oh, man. And, yeah, I mean, he has... He's dropping for the first time since 25 minutes below 1000 command points and this is dropping and dropping more and more and he has no more arches on the field that means nothing absolutely nothing can deal with this giant's eagle and he can just slowly and surely take down everything what is left from the goblin player fairy and the game being all the time behind being all the time below 500 command points having only glorfindel and elrond at your side Shows how much impact those heroes have in the game, in the lead game. What a game. And yeah, that's gonna be actually, and unbelievable actually for me, won by the Alvin player Mephi. And that's crazy, you know. Fairy, Fairy isn't giving up, up yet. He still has a builder. He's throwing up f endless amounts of fissures. I think he hopes that maybe he has enough economy left to do one big giant push uh, with no heroes to defend the fortress. He could potentially kill the elven player's base with lots of upgraded half trolls, but it just, it seems like, a you know, he, he was in a position winning this entire game. The, the thought that he could somehow win this game now from a position at disadvantage just seems unfathomable. Uh, the thing is, I think he can't even purchase the upgrades anymore because the armory is gone. And th there's right. another armory. Okay, never mind. He has another armory here. Okay, I take it back. Uh, so he can still do it. I mean, now it depends if he can take down the fortress. Even though the, uh, the heroes are far away, the eagle can still come and use the wing blast, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, those two archers, they're not going to be enough to take down an eagle level 10. Uh, Balrog can't be used, obviously you don't have Fortress anymore and that's the win condition. I mean, power points and heroes are the highest win condition, I think, in the late game of this game. How exhausting must this match have been for Fairy to be on the cusp for this for this entire game and then and then to have, you know, and to have the game kind of snatched out from underneath you after dominating for so long. But he only has himself to blame. Not going Gorkil, not paying enough attention to these heroes. I mean, the only uh, hero he, he had was Azok, right? He didn't go for yeah, another, exactly. any other hero. I mean, the Fire Drake from the Fortress, I don't count that as a hero. But, I mean, you could have gone for, the, for Shelob. I think Shelob, once she's highly leveled, she can do some work. She's quite tanky. Um, you can deal the decent damage to the fortress as well. God kills a Goblin King. Drago. I mean, he had money and the time for every single hero. Unlike, unlike the Elven player, an Elven player was running out of money all the time, you know? Yeah, I think even even going back to when you thought he bought Drogoth, I mean, Drogoth is your answer to this eagle. You have, you have successfully made this elf play with almost no archers. Well, he has made archers, but you've dealt with them, right? Like, like you can... You have the ability as a player to keep that Drogoth alive in this specific match, and that was an answer that you had to this Eagle that has made it impossible for you to close the game. Yeah. I mean, if he can just get rid of Glorfindel, if he can just get rid of the Eagle in any of the last of the 20 minutes, he wins this game 100%. Yeah. If he combos his powers, you know, if he has the patience to wait to use Worm with Balrog or with uh, or with the dragon and just focus the fort. There's nothing the elven player could have done. He could have burned it down. And, and he's just sort of like in desperation, throwing things endlessly at the elf. And to Maddie's credit, has managed to dodge and parry every single move to be in this position now. What That's so game. true. That's so true. And I think the, the biggest mistake uh, from Fairy was definitely to actually ignore the fact that Glorfindel and Elrond were existing in the game. He was kind of trying to play around them, you know, it was like he wanted to play as as if they are not existing in the game and that's something you can do, you can't ignore them at this stage of the game, they do so much, they do have so much impact, especially Glorfindel with the level 10 Starlight, you know, he's like a one-man army that can wipe out your entire army alone, and he was, I, I had the feeling he was never ever trying purposely to take them down, he was never mm -hmm. trying to focus them down, he was just running through them pretty much, 
Um, and I think at, at many stages of the game, you know, he had enough half draw swordsmen with enough upgrades. He has Azok on the field that also de uh, deals decent amount of damage. And he had maybe the chance to take him down. I think the fact that he take, took down Elrond with only one half throw swordsman, and I think that was not even a purpose move from Fairy. <laughs> they were yeah. just standing yeah. around and he was taking them taking him down randomly, you know? Yeah, I agree. So it's... I have a question for you, Shanks. Uh, yeah. This game looks like it's on in the books. I think what Fairy is doing here, he's just sort of spending his money immediately to just make structures to make this game drag out, which which may seem lame, but he's taking a moment to repose to think about next match. If you're Fairy, do you change factions next match? And what and what map would you go to? Um, I don't know which maps are actually bans. The small so maps the are banned, right? The, the maps, the the map bans only affect game one. The the purpose of the bans is just to have like a little bit of player input to to, to try and get to a neutral uh, map one. The bans don't apply, so Fairy can pick any map. He can even pick Fords of Eisen again, since he we assume is going to lose on it. Yeah. Um, um I'm pretty sure that uh, Westwold is gonna be picked from Fairy, and mm -hmm. he's gonna pick Goblins again. I feel like I he's so. gonna pick Goblins again, you know, because that's his main and favorite faction. So he's gonna try to do it, and let's be honest, um, on Westfold he has more chance to win than in Forts of Eisen, and this one was really close already. So if he if he yeah. performs near as good as he did in the beginning of the game, besides the fact that he needs to focus the heroes down, he can do it in uh, Westfold. But yeah, he might also I... pick Man or Engma, you know, those are I think great picks against Elves uh, as well, but I'm pretty sure that he's gonna pick up Goblin Faction once again. Yeah, I think that that's a safe bet. I mean, what a game this was. Imagine if we get five of these. Uh, <laughs> I I do want to stress how, like, this game was pretty exhausting. And and True. we're going to have to see the resilience from Fairy. To, to, to be so close to victory and then to have it lost, I can only imagine what's going through his head. I hope, if he has the mind of a champion, what's going through his head is, okay... What do I do next game? Uh, what map do I want to go? I think yeah. I am. So what? Did, how could I have won? Okay, next game if I play the same, but I but I get Gorkil sooner, and I'm a little more patient. Maybe I win, and, and he goes to it, and he's just kind of like collecting his thoughts right here. But I fear, I worry, and a lesser player might just be going. Man, I hate elves. Man, that was man, that was that was bull crap. Uh, uh, losing lo losing after winning so close, but that that's a loser's mentality. I will tell you right now, my friend. Yeah. LK game or the next series after this best of five series is gonna be the winner of this game of this series either Fairy or Mephi will be playing against Irvi. This is the finals of the loser bracket right now. Uh, it's gonna be 1-0 after this game for Mephi's Mirix who was playing the Alvin faction. And whoever wins the series, uh, we have at least two more games to go after this one, uh, will be facing against Irvi in the winner finals. Fairy is building a fort here. Uh, oh, no. I think he, he, he was hoping to get a Balrog summon off, but it's not going to happen. I mean, maybe if, enough, you, if you summon Balrog and Dragon at the same time, you know? Well, the thing is, is he is I'm almost positive that he picked... <laughs> there's, the, there's the mentality. That's a mistake. Oh, I... oh, no. That is still a fissure at the bottom left side here in the middle. I mean, uh, which needs to be taken down uh, for him to be defeated, obviously. <laughs> there was like a cat and mouse game now the past five minutes. Fairy was trying to build multiple cave, um, you know, goblin caves and fissures to stay alive. But it's yeah. not gonna deny, it's just gonna delay the, the end. Which is gonna be in favor for the Alvin player. Mephi is in the game number one after an incredible back and forth game between el elves and goblins. And I think every player had multiple chances to win this game so many times. Uh, I would say that Fairy had very true the game kind of you know he had the advantage he was able to win this game it was looking so great for him if he would just take down Glorfindel you know uh, yeah. then the game would be over 20 minutes ago guys but yeah the power of heroes in the game in the late game especially once they have the levels imagine you are playing man of the west and you have Aragorn level 10 or Gandalf level 10 those heroes they can you know win the game for you win the great battles for you with Ward of Power with Starlight from Glorfindel or with Army of the Dead special summon from Aragorn. They can do so much work. Anyways, we're gonna jump right into the game number two, boys.
Guys, the second game is all about to begin. This time on Jungles of Farharat. Goblins against Elves one more time. Can Fairy do this? Uh, do this this time? And uh, you know, after such a suffer game he had on the map Forts of Eisen, we're gonna figure out really fast. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna be honest. I don't expect the map to change that much. To be completely honest with you, I mean, he's gonna have more ways to enter, and it's gonna be a little harder for the elf to uh, to to sort of you know set up choke points um, to defend himself from fairy. But the choke points, other than like a tower that lasted maybe five minutes in that first 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 game, the towers didn't mean that much. Uh, take it away, Shank. Sorry. Yeah. And yeah, we're gonna have another, uh, again an early barracks coming up for Mephi. He's by the way the green elven player at the bottom side of the map, jungles of Farharat. And his opponent is the pink goblin player, Fairy, at the top side, being one or behind, and starting with two tunnels and into the goblin cave. So with that being said, we're gonna have again early creeping action. Um, I think the key in this map for the elven player, Mephi, should be to take down uh, to take the control of those two signal fires in the middle of the map, if you can. Because they're mm -hmm. gonna give you so much vision control, which again will be so useful against those mobile sneaky factions like goblins. So you can see those tunnels, you know, way before and you can have much more time to react. And reaction time is gonna be the key for victory, in my opinion, for the elven faction here. Yeah, um, I, I agree. I think that the signal fires, if the elven player, well, either player that controls them, it's going to be a really big advantage, but doubly so for the elf just to be able to make really good decisions on where he has to defend the endless waves of goblins. But one funny thing about this match, uh, about this match on this different map, is that for on Fords of Eisen, one of the ways that Fairy got such a big lead was he was able to sort of interfere with Where's his this? opponent's creeping, mm -hmm. and that sort of like slingshot him ahead. He's not going to be able to do this on this big map, and in fact, he's opting for Lings uh, instead of uh, the cave open, which is a good choice. I think that that on such a big map, that's that's something that uh, is going to work into his favor, a uh, really useful tool. But not being able to cancel this uh, ward creep by the Elven player, I think might make the early gameplay radically different. And I take it back, by the way, guys, it was a spider pit start from Fairy and not a goblin cave. Uh, he's going to go for the goblin cave as a second production building, uh, using the spider links coming from the spider pit first to creep the war layer. That's actually not bad because this way they're gonna hit level 2. So every time when you will be able to save one of them, they will be recovering over time. They are kind of sneaky units, they are quite fast, mobile, dealing decent amount of damage to the structures as well. Uh, but Fairy will have arches ready to defend and he's just gonna spam more and more arches and going for the second barracks at the very same time. As he was able to creep this work layer at the bottom left side. So this one is looking actually quite good for Fairy so far. Because he has the right units. To defend the upcoming attack from those spider links. Mm -hmm. um, the second cave is coming up for fairy, and we would need a transition really fast into the spider riders or into the half troll swordsman here. Because I don't think that those goblins, it's a long way to travel if you don't have a tunnel close to the side of the Alvin player, and that should be the goal. You know, you need to try to attack him from multiple sides at once, which makes it almost impossible for the Alvin player Mephi to defend. Every single side. Elves, they want you to group, you know. I think that's what the Elven player wants you to do. So he wants to... He is looking for those big big fights. Which is gonna be in his favor. Because he has archers, archer-based army. And they're gonna take down your spiderlings, your goblins from a safe distance. And that's what you need to avoid, I think. You need to avoid those big fights as the goblins. Especially early on. And yeah, this game might not last as long as the other game, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really long game. I, I, how many times do we see games in which we unlock almost every single PowerPoint ability from the spellbook, you know? How many yeah, times we see games in which Glorfindel hits level 10? <laughs> Starlight. Yeah. That was the first time ever that I have seen that in a tournament game, by the way, from a, in a 1v1. It's crazy. I think it's the first time I ever saw uh, an Elrond tornado in a tournament game, too. Yeah. Um... All Interesting right. interaction happened early on here. Fairy wanted to creep uh, the, that forward ward by the right signal fire. Managed to do so. Just barely got his... Uh, just barely got 
to it, save both of his spiderlings and got the last hit on the creep while he was getting attacked by Maddie on the ling that was that almost died. So he managed to get both of his starting links to level two, get all of the creep gold from that. Uh, not something to be uh, dismissed as a. a and he's creeping the troll happened. at the bottom left side, by the way, with goblins, guys. Yeah, cleverly done. Let's see if he pulls the troll. Yeah. Um, is that even possible in Witch King? I don't even. I don't know, but in BFME 2, it's kind of yes when this happens. Because the troll from the creep is so powerful <laughs> and it takes down the structures with two shots, by the way, with two hits. But Ooh, I mean, it's working. It's working. Oh. I mean, sometimes he randomly stops chasing and turns back to the original spot. But in yeah, this case, he, he actually is chasing, so. Okay, and I mean, on the other side, you know, Mephi has pikemen and archers ready to defend anyway. So let's see how much damage this troll will be able to deal. I don't think so. I don't think he will be able to take down anything, you know? Yeah, because he's still chasing the goblins. Yeah. Okay, now he's, uh, he's done. Gonna fight against the pikeman. Pikeman should be able to take him down quite fast. And actually, Mephi is using the rallying call for that. Okay. Wow. Wow. That's a huge win for Fairy. I, to me, it just seemed like, oh, well, I guess you're going to give uh, your opponent some free power points here. But managing to tax that rally call, maybe in a little bit of fear, means he's he should win this fight. Uh, maybe. It's going to be close. But the, yeah. the half-troll sword with the debuff is very strong for This This rocks, you see that rocks, you know, here that, uh, you know, actually denies Fairy to attack those units here from this side. They need to go all the way around in order to reach them. We'll be able to take down one of those arches. No buff is available for those units, obviously. And they are also being debuffed now with the cave pads. Uh, there was a cave pad start here from Fairy. Um, he should be able to win that fight with the half troll swordsman. Especially because more goblins are coming from those two goblin caves. But this game, you know, I gotta be honest. This game is looking much better for the Elven player than the last game. And last game was also won by the Elven player in the late game, so... So far, he didn't lose a single Malone tree just yet. He has a decent amount of resource income. He has both signal fires under his control. He has a great vision control in the map jungles of Fararat. And putting he's, he's the one who's putting the pressure, so... Hmm. Yeah, managed to kill uh, one of the level 2 lings, which is a big pickup for him in that fight. Though he is, you know, he's not going to do any economic damage. Um, and... Uh, Fairy has this level two swordsman that can come in pretty clutch here, but I, I almost expect uh, Maddie with this extra space, with this lack of pressure being put on him, I expect to see one of those critical, all important heroes that played such a, a so important role in game one to come out even earlier, um, with no counter for Fairy immediately. Yeah, Revolutionist, welcome to the stream, and hello, uh, Vulkats, my friends, welcome to the stream as well. Uh, sorry, I didn't uh, message you or talk to you immediately because we were. Having this interesting in conversations about the uh, gameplay between goblins and elves in the <laughs> finals of the loser brackets in the tournament, which uh, Andy is hosting with a cash price of three hundred fifty dollars. And I think the loser of this game is gonna get fifty, right? The loser of this game gets fifty, so you know, uh, yeah. So they... you get some money regardless if you lose or win. I mean, you know, double or double or nothing kind of thing. You know, if you win, you get one hundred minimum, and you get the chance to fight against Irby. For a chance of $200, so, um, I mean, Irby is gonna be like like the raid boss, you know, <laughs> in this tournament. I think he's like, you know, a really great 1v1 play, it's gonna be challenging for Fairy, but also for Mephi. I'm actually quite surprised Mephi performing this great in this tournament, because normally or I didn't see him that much in the tournaments I was hosting so far, at least. Unlike, mm -hmm. unlike Fairy and Irby, they're always participating. So maybe Mephi can also be the world champion, who knows? I, I mean, he is playing, he has been playing quite well. He has an early Glorfindel out here, which he is electing to, you know, chase chase the lings off with, which is a good counter. Um, it, it's going to make it really annoying for, for Fairy, because every time, uh, you, you know, he doesn't want this Glorfindel to level, so he might be a little more hesitant. And, and I feel like if you if we ask Fairy after the series, you know, who which hero he hates the most in Rise of the Witch King, he will definitely answer with Glorfindel because he was a nightmare for Fairy to deal with in the previous game. Watch this cleave. Oof. But he was, he's gonna be able to take down the Malon tree though, that's the good part about it. He's gonna be able to take down the second Malon tree level 2, by the way, with those half troll swordsmen. And them man, those half troll swordsmen are so strong. So strong. I like them so much. Yeah, they're great units. 
Um, this is a good this is a good push from from fairy. I mean, getting getting two of these original uh, trees so quickly is good. But again, you have this this wild card factor, this X factor, this scaling hero that has that you know is already level three. Um, he's been out for about a minute and is level three already, and that's scary. And the, and I, you know, I I almost expect off of this early game to see fairy sort of, you know, really turn up the pressure right here get a lot of tree kills but almost uh but if he doesn't get some kind of answer for these heroes we might just see a repeat of last game yeah that's true and i would really really like to see some hero action also from the goblin player in this game um i think that's really necessary you know to compete with those heroes from the album player um also funny fact that we didn't see Haldir one time from Mephi, so the heroes he chose to get on the field also in the previous game were Elrond and Glorfindel. Normally we see much more Haldir than we do see Elrond. That was kinda surprising. Also, I mean yeah, pretty much you know, if you have Elrond you actually don't need uh Haldir. But I feel like Haldir level 8, you know, with the with the global stun. With the golden mm. arrow shot can actually do so much work and imagine you have Haldir and uh, level 10 Glorfindel, you know, you can stun them pretty much all the time. And then you refresh with your fully leveled Elrond and yeah. you get four, four stuns right on top yeah, of each other, that crazy. would be impressive, yeah. Okay, we have now Azok oh. on the fields and I I feel like guys, um, Glorf, you know, Gorkil the Goblin King is kinda so underrated and he offers you so much, he actually, you know, makes you... Um, gives you fear resistant with the level 2 skull totem, he gives you leadership with level 4, deals decent amount of damage, not the greatest 1v1 hero, obviously he's more like a sportive hero, but, you know, he can do some work. Okay, another Malon tree has been taken down and we're gonna take a look into the com uh, current command points and power points. So Fairy has 825 command points, but again, he has two of those Barrow expansions, which are granting him 150 additional command points. 9 power points collected by Fairy after Cave Pets and War Chants. And he's having a decent amount of resource income again. So Lumber Mills are coming up for him to even increase that uh, you know, more and more. On the other side, 475 command points only for Mephi's Milk. But we have seen in the previous game that command points, um, you know, doesn't mean you're gonna lose the game and regardless. So he has Glorfindel on the field and as long as he's alive, and he's already level 4 by the way guys, it's crazy. Um, Everything is possible. So I really hope from Fairy and that he will try to take down Glorfindel this game and doesn't ignore yeah. him like in the last game, which was the main reason why he ended up losing the game. No, I I, I agree completely. Um, and I, I feel like if he goes into this game and he doesn't, you know, build Gorkil or, or some kind of... Uh, focused effort to to we kill these heroes then i almost want to say that he's so, almost too exhausted from that game one and and uh you know failing to change his game plan even a little bit i think means that yeah. he's almost given up if that makes sense and um yeah i was it was looking for a second that it was like if he was saving for elrond again because he had around 1800 resources collected elrond cost 2500 as we know but i'm assuming he's gonna go for um Haldir. I think Haldir is coming because he bought something for 1,200. It has to be Haldir. I don't think that it's gonna be Arvin or something, you know. So Haldir is gonna come, potentially. Um, the good thing is here for Fairy, and he, he has only one Lorien Swordsman, so the damage output on those structures will be kinda limited. Oh, Wildman of Dunland for defensive purposes. And Mist yeah, and Warchant, okay. So they are committing fully to that fight, uh, which is should be won by the Goblin player, in my opinion. Yeah, with the Wildman summon, uh, for sure. Um, it's it seems almost silly for an Elven player to sort of like make make this this sort of push with all those archers and just one warrior. But his goal here, uh, not thinking about the power points, was just to sort of set up right outside the Goblin caves. Uh, the, the Elven player in this matchup can get to a point where you just sort of park right outside of his base, and the Goblin player isn't allowed to ever leave his base. And that's sort of like a way that if the Elven player gets an advantage early, can sort of immediately choke out the Goblin. And that's something that a lot of people have experienced when they think about this matchup. But Fairy, heads up play, knows that he has to burn that summon, yeah. and it's a, and it's going to blow back into Maddie's face uh, pretty pretty hard. Yeah, and I feel I feel like... Uh, we're gonna have the same, you know, the same scenario like in the last game because this Glorfindel is again, you know, doing so much work. Look his levels. He's level 5 already. Uh, that's kind of scary once again for Fairy. 
Uh, right now he doesn't have the two tools he needs and the units he needs actually to take him down fast enough. Far away from getting anywhere close to upgrades and again not counting on those heroes. Um, mm -hmm. it might be the mistake, you know. Uh, and I also can't see Azok on the field. Where is Azok? He was there. I mean, did he die? Maybe. Yeah, I can't find him either. He's not in the tunnels. Yeah, hmm. He's probably dead again, so... I mean, that was also the, the problem last game. He he lost, you know, Azok like five to six times. He make a tower now, though, uh, with the fire hero upgrades. <laughs> Glorfindel is committing to that. Needs to be careful. You don't want to be in, stuck in between, especially when you are on horse and you are mounted. You take way more damage from those pikemen. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that it looks like they are kind of, you know, splitting the map. You see that? So, Elven player is actually under control from the right side and the Goblin player is under control from the left side. Fairy hasn't been able to put a lot of pressure on the Elf this game. I think yeah. that you know, when, when people start to think about uh, the maps, it, Jungles of Far Harad is synonymous with Goblin map, Dwarf map, because the mines and tunnels are, are so good on, on big maps. And while that's 100% true, it does make it harder for him to put lots of pressure on this Elf. And and Manny could almost like cash flow to an Eagle way faster than he did last game. Yeah. And, you know, and with no fire arrows and without like full control like Fairy had last game, an elf could just break, or uh, an eagle could just break this game wide open for the elf. Um, but any option that Maddie wants to go, I think is the is correct. I mean, Mavi is actually, uh, you know, when you also need to give credits to him, he's scouting quite nicely. And again, those signal fires they are helping out a lot, so you are able to see those tunnels way way easier and take them down way faster. And indeed, you know, I don't see any tunnel being close enough to the Elven player, so he needs to actually move all the way from his side of the map to the downside. In the meantime, um, there are some arches here around the trees. Glorfindel is doing his thing. He's getting more and more experience, but he might be in trouble here. If he can... I see if he can he has heal, so. He does have heal, and Maddie has enough money that, like, honestly, losing him isn't going to be that big of a deal. I almost would have liked to see him just sit there and swing, because the potential splash kill that he could have gotten there would have been so juicy. But, you know, I respect uh, retreating him, and almost level six already. And almost Eagle special summon. Eagle special summon already. Already, uh, uh, he's here. You know, that's crazy. Yeah, yes, I yes, mean, he, he can end the game with just Glorfindel and, and the Eagles right here. Yeah. Uh, Barry is not in any real position to be able to resist that. Uh, as soon as he has Blade of Purity back, uh, the Blade of Purity Windrider Eagles on the fort. It's a classic. And, yeah, I mean, again, Fairy is building multiple defensive structures. Maybe he's stream sniping. Because the second he sets, <laughs> Eagles are coming. He's building towers. I don't know about that. Oh, no. Say <laughs> it ain't so, you hero. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, you know, let's see. I mean, we have delay in the stream, so kind of 20 seconds. Um, but again, you know, 20 <laughs> seconds is not that much. No, not, not for... I, I, I not don't for think that. Fairy is stream sniping, though. I, I, you know. It was it was funny. Uh, he does have the vines, though. I mean, that, again, like, uh, we say that and, and we joke about the, the stream snipe, but this, you know, Fairy is a good player. He's here for a reason. Uh, anybody that has played against an elf at a high level has had their fort taken by Eagles glorfman yeah. when they're winning the game so it, just having the presence of mind like oh, i should probably make my my fort tank here really really smart this land's riches will be mine. um yeah man i i mean it, it other than a cheeky uh glorfindel and eagle summon on the fort which doesn't seem like it'll win this you know tanky fort now yeah um I don't really see how either player can can finish this close. It seems definitely like anybody's game, but with us, I, I you know I would favor the elf, obviously, especially after game two. Um, yeah, watch your summon. Wow. Okay. Where did he use it? I, I can't see it. Uh, the right? the right the right signal fire. Yeah, he got a oh, okay. decent chunk of troops killed there. Um, interesting summon. Content to have his here his uh, Glorfindel level hunt down these spiderlings though. <laughs> Again, we say Azog all by himself, getting chased by a bit of an Elven force. Alright, um, yeah, I mean, 
The watch is on cooldown now. The eagles are still available for the for the Alvin player, and Azok is fighting against uh, Glorfindel, but you can't fight him, even with your great battle reach. It's not gonna work. And he has played of purity. He's just gonna out damage you, out sustain you. No big deal. Wind Rider is available now, so in the worst case, you can use it. I mean, he doesn't need to use it to be honest. To get away. Um, eagles are coming. Okay, that was a bit earlier than I was expecting it. I was thinking that he's gonna go for the fortress first and try yeah, to take it down. He might be content here just to wipe this army off of off of the map and then use the eagles to kind of like clear out one of the flanks. I mean, Fairy has all of these tunnels creeping along the side of the map and just you know, uh, similar to a, a more expensive spiderling summon in a way where you're content to, to just you know a button and now you have have units that freely harass your opponent it's it's a good move here yeah and also really interesting to mention i mean last game remember in the game number one on the map forts of Eisen, he went for the stables and made a lot of lindon horse archers at the beginning of the game this is not gonna be the case in this game he has triple barracks so he keeps spamming those infantry units all of them are still only level one so we're not gonna see any mirk woods any soon um, but yes, you know, again, a really strong hero and Glorfindel once again is level 7 already, guys. That's crazy. We have a Wildman summon in the back of Fairy Space. He's trying to get as much economic damage here as possible, but the Eagle is almost here. The Fortress Eagle is almost here while the summon ones are, you know, still uh, culling the Goblin Hordes yeah. successfully. Later, Purity is gonna be available, so no Elrond just yet. The only hero he's counting on is only Glorfindel this game. Uh, this Malone tree is gonna go down from the Wildman. And the beautiful thing about the Wildman is every time you attack the structures, you're gonna get cash. You're gonna steal the money from your opponent. And actually, Fairy now is putting in some nice work. Uh, Azok is almost level 5, and Azok is gonna be in trouble now. Uh, great battle rage is on cooldown and Plate of Purity is gonna hit like a truck as you know guys, look at this, he needs to run for his life but there is no running away from Glorfindel, but it looks like he doesn't want to overcome it. Very similarly, low. yeah, very similarly to last game we have Fairy with a full 1000 available CP in the bank and with this Wildman summon and this good harassment that he's putting on right here, uh, Matty only has 535 available to him but this Eagle and this Hero how is fairy going to deal with it uh, yeah. almost like perfectly uh you know parallel to last game exactly and the eagle is gonna i mean eagle was one of the biggest win conditions from for the album player Mephi in the previous game he was able i think he lost him only once and he was able to get him even to level 10 afterwards and the way he was playing around with the eagle oh he doesn't want to look one hit was needed actually to kill azok but it looks like he doesn't want to risk the biscuit Armory is up once again, he purchased uh, the scavenged armor and all the other upgrades are unpurchased just yet. Um, Good link summon. Yeah, and look at this, you know, it's really um, intense to see that Elven player is does have nothing on the field, guys. He has nothing yeah. on the field. He has only one pikeman coming and one Lorian uh, swordman. That's it. And Glorfindel. And Glorfindel is quite slow, and heal is not available. Look, he's alive, so he needs to be super careful. Can't really do much. The Eagle is trying his hardest to defend as well as possible. He's really close to that level 5 power spike with the Wind Blast. On the bright side for Mev, he has 16 power points collected. Glorfindel is healing up. Oof. You gotta be careful I mean, with Glorfindel can, here. You, yeah, you can kill this Glorfindel with yeah. this one Goblin. Poison Blade's aggressive, go for it. Uh, does he see it? Does he poison? No, he doesn't. He was not paying attention, I guess. But that stops the healing, automatic healing from the heroes if you attack them. So it's gonna Maybe. need a while again. Oh! Glorfindel? He's watching. But he's gonna remain low. Uh, heal is gonna be available pretty soon, though. So he yeah, should be able... He immediate, yeah, he has to heal immediately, because this is his only tool to kind of, like, stop the bleeding here. Fairy has our good friend the Fire Drake up, and we have we have armor already from Fairy. I... I you know, he might have enough strength right here to close this game shortly, yeah. except for the fact that, you know, Maddie ha has so many more power points, even compared to last game. Look, he has 17 available, might be waiting to go for that 25, but even like a big cloud break right here and perfectly used uh, Eagle and and Glorfindel could could save his life from this push. Yeah. This, is, That's so this is looking terrifying. That's looking really bad. I mean, he has now some archers, so if you don't use Cloudbreak, the Eagle might be in trouble. 
They have also Fighter Upgrade Purchase, so they're gonna deal a decent amount of damage. Azok is also here, he's level 4, obviously has the... Oh, the Fire Drake! Okay, Miss will be used to uh, debuff. Fire Drake will be taken down here, unfortunately, immediately. I, um, 18 power points from Mephi are rising. He's going for the Cloud Break, which will be used immediately. And now at the stage here with the buff in the in the bag. Glorfindel, who is using the Blade of Purity, almost level 8. And the Eagle smashing down those units. That might be enough to defend this attack. And it's gonna maybe give, give Mephi the time he needs to reorganize his army. The Croatian is gone, but all the arches are almost dead, so I don't think that this is gonna be enough to take down the eagle. Yeah, I... Fairy needs to have the presence of mind, though. I, I can almost guarantee you he's, like, shocked that his opponent has that many more command points available. Um, but you really need to have the presence of mind to not have your all of your, uh, your goblin archers clumped into one pile so that, you know, just the AoE cleave there. Yeah. Um, just really really equalizing that fight i think without the cloud break he would have won this game right there i i 100 percent agree with you but um, the problem is the he's so behind in terms of power points guys and this eagle is getting stronger and stronger level five the wing blast is gonna be ready azok is running for his life there is an escape way and more units are coming we have now a lot of more goblin archers with upgrades the eagle has to be careful here glorfinder is quite low is glorfinder gonna die finally no, 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 he's gonna get away barely, but the eagle is taking way too much damage. Wing Blast is available. Use Wing Blast, maybe? Maybe. I mean, uh... he's actually not taking too much damage, but Tainted Light will be used for the for the buff. And the eagle is gonna go away. And once again, he will be able to defend himself quite nicely. I like it. Um, Yeah, he's reviving his Fire Drake. Fire Drake was actually, you know, kind of not in the best position. Azok is left alone. Glorfindel is gonna have his beta of purity again if you are going to spend all of this money on replacing your fire drakes and you have uh, and all of the gold that led up to you know the upgrades the upgraded fort the the dragon's uh, sanctum or whatever it's called um and you've successfully kept the elven's control points so low why don't you just go drogoth to deal with this eagle yeah um or why don't you finally make uh, when you realize your opponent has cloud break and his uh, Glorfindel is all about to hit level 10. <laughs> Why don't you make Gorkil the Goblin King? Why don't you make Gorkil the Goblin King? 100%. I want to see Fairy Gorkil the Goblin King, Fairy. If you are watching the stream sniping, please do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, Azok now, is level now 6 now. Uh, he, this is another scary push uh, from, from Fairy. Uh, I mean, the upgraded... This, this fort is really tanky, and he's just going to immediately bring the Eagle back. But the Eagle is... Quarter HP, um, yeah. two, two battalions oh, of, the build of has been taken fire down. arrows. Ooh, that's nice. I like it. If Fairy has the presence of mind to use the axe throwers and the two battalions on, on this eagle, he might be able to, to to close this game out and get rid of this eagle. He he pulls the axe thrower. Oh, uh, Glorfindel in the meantime forcing the fire drake away, and Mephi is calling it GG this time. Okay, he got a serious wow. boys. We've got a series. What a game. It can be done. It can be done, boys. The goblin player beat the elf. Yes, it was on jungles of Far Harad. So uh, w well done to uh, both players to be Finally. To be Beautiful. And we're going to jump right into the game number three, which is going to be the first tiebreaker in the best of five series. The game number yep. three is all about to begin, guys. Goblins against elves once again. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> I, I forgot to... to Oh, also I also need I... to edit the scoreboard real fast. One second, we are done. Beautiful. And let's get it started. Oh, what happens? I think I bugged the game. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Do we need to go back and pick you up? No, right? So you're here. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm still in. I just want to make sure we save the replay. Which, if I had had the, the presence. All right. All right. Let's get it started Sorry. then. Uh, let, me, let me rename the replay. Sorry to mess mm -hmm. up the flow. No problem, no problem. Alright guys, the game number 3 is finally about to begin. Strong Badge 3, thank you so much for the follow man, appreciate it. Hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. Um, yeah, Goblins against Elves 3 times in a row, there we go. And this time, Fairy has to work a bit harder. At the bottom side of the map, he's the pink Goblin player. And his opponent at the top side is the green Elven player, Mephis Merc. 
who lost the previous game on the map Jungle so far Harats, but won the game with a lot of great comebacks on the map Forts of Ice. And that was the first game, by the way, which lasts over an hour. That might be the longest series we have ever seen so far in a best of five. I mean, the grand finals we had for the World Championship 2019 between Irby against uh, Mr. Smog. That was like two and a half hours, but that was best of seven. And we went all the way to game number seven. Mm. And because the fact that I need to leave soon, I really don't hope that we're going to see five games here. <laughs> 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 Normally, I would really appreciate it. But uh, I think if we see more 30 minutes games, like three more games, uh, my wife is not going to talk to me anymore for a while. So... For the sake of my family, finish this game fast, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Two Malon early barracks once again. So he's doing all the time the same start. He's going to go for the creep on the right side. And going for the second Malon tree next. And on the other side, we will have this time a goblin cave start. Unlike the last game in which he was starting with the spider pit. So I like to think that Fairy is switching you know, his starts a bit. Unlike Matthews, who is doing the same thing over and over again. Which also makes it a bit more predictable for the goblin player, Fairy. So if you do the same thing all the time, your opponent is able to predict you, now, you know? And yeah. that's really good for, for from Fairy. He's switching everything for each game. So second Goblin Cave is coming up super early. And he might be even able to, you know, stop him from creeping. Or to interrupt this creep. What do you think, Andy? I think uh, if anybody remembers Fairy's uh, first round match against United of Ea, um, that it got to game three, C Knight of A counterpicked him to this map, um, and immediately did did exactly what Maddie is doing, did uh, resource building, production building, started creeping immediately, and Fairy immediately rushed to that ward, uh, and managed to steal the gold. Um, I don't think he's going to be able to do that here. I I think that uh, even from game one, he managed to have the second uh, warrior come up and and kill that Mithlon sentry, but he yeah. definitely tries. I mean, on the bright side, even though he lost a couple of those Mifflons, he's going to get them level 2, so they will be recovering over time anyway, and he was able to secure the last hit, plus the treasure for himself, which means Mephi is the real pirate in this game. He doesn't let his treasure being stolen from Fairy, <laughs> And Fairy is doing the same work creep at the bottom right side of his side, and also at the same time at the top left side, so he's going to be able to creep two work layers at the same time. And the transition into the fissure is coming up. So, I mean, we have seen in the last two games that those half thrust swordsmen are the way to go. Let's be honest, they are really strong, guys. They are really hard to take down. They are dealing incredible amount of damage. And we have seen they are performing quite nicely against the Alvin army. I mean, they are one of the strongest swordsmen at the end of the day, you know? Because 400 each, they can't get trampled down. And talking about trampled down, these two games now, this game and last game, Mephi is not going for Kev. So, in the previous game, in the game number one on Forts of Ice, remember he was starting with the, uh, you know, the, the third structure from him was li literally the, the stables, and then he went for the Lindon Horse Archers, which actually make him, you know, stall long enough. They were putting in some nice work at the beginning of the game, but these two games now he's, you know, making double barracks, and potentially even a third barracks will come up pretty soon to keep up yeah, potentially I with the spam, you know, from the goblins. Yeah, I think that not going cavalry is uh, might be a sign of a little bit of like player fatigue from that from that long game. And maybe as he's thinking back to that game one, the game is so long he doesn't remember how. Even though the Lindens maybe didn't scale that well into the into the late late game, they did force Fairy to make extra decisions uh, early and mid that sort of prevented him from being able to do that big all uh goblin and uh and wildman summon push to, to finish the game like he did you know like like go back to that game two where where maddie had three three farms some of the big game were the wildman summon from fairy to wipe out his economy in the back if he has one unit of cavalry there uh fairy's not allowed to do that um yeah. and I exactly that's what i'm saying all the time you know your move doesn't uh, have to succeed I mean, for example, if you make spider riders and you don't deal too much damage with them, it's absolutely fine because you're going to force your opponent, the Alvin player, Mephi, to make multiple pikemen. And that means mm. he's going to have less archers on the field, you know? And less archers means less damage output. So you, you need, he, needs more dam he needs more units in the front line to absorb the damage. And uh, that means less archers. Less archers means you have more, you know, 
tools to actually take down the front line fast enough and then you can go for a trample you can use the mobility from those spider riders and pressure all the time and you know forcing your opening to do something wait a second where's the gift troll there oh look at mm. this what what he's uh, happening at the bottom right side <laughs> he's gonna he's trying to loot what oh okay never mind i take it back it was for a <laughs> second that the gift troll was from the creep but uh, the creep's already gone so it's a yeah, gift yeah. troll from the goblin play guys my bad sorry from the visual level okay. too it's a little curious that he chooses to pick up the tree here i would have liked to see a goblin throw yeah it really helps scatter the elven formation and you can but maybe maybe he's gonna combo one one goblin throw and then one and then one with the tree uh could spell devastation yeah, that's for, been the case right uh, now yeah and actually that might force uh Mephi, you know to go for the alvin wood for the fear resistance you know mm -hmm. you and... see rally call committed Okay, Bats. get a pull with the troll. This cave, this cave trolls, they can't eat an orc to heal up. Oh no, the one troll is stuck. Oh, Look at it. oh he's gonna get away. Oh, that was close, 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 close. But he's being chased down by those pikemen. Uh, that means those archers in the back are unprotected now. Okay, beautiful. He can take them down now, no big deal. Unfortunately, those trolls are level 1, so they won't be healing up over time. Uh, you need to get them level 2 for that. And for the for the um, uh, mountain trolls from the Moro faction, you need to get them even level 3. But they again have a you know way. Oh, we have lancers now on the fields. Oh, the troll was right, you know, running right into the pikeman, unfortunately. Uh, also, the second troll will be taken down here, unfortunately, for the for the goblin player. And that kind of hurts you big time. They cost 500 each, and you also need to upgrade your fissure to level two first. So, um, losing them without being able to deal any counter damage. I mean, he was able to take down a couple of those archers. But it kind of hurts now, and that's a big victory here for this battle for the Alvin player Matthews. Yeah, uh, this is this is looking very very scary. I'm surprised that Maddie has elected to go uh, heal here. Honestly, with how hard he wins wins that fight with with if he can get a couple extra units of melee units, one Elven Wood, and he can end the game on this push. Yeah. Um, a thousand gold uh, plus the time on the fisher to get it level two to get those two trolls um it was tragic that one kind of got stuck and took so much damage there but he did not get what he needed out of that a thousand gold investment and he's horribly on the back right now yeah and on this map it's going to be really really easy for maddie to choke him out so it's going to take some real ingenuity um from i mean i think in a situation like this it's not gonna be enough for fairy to perform really good he also needs to rely on the mistakes from Mephi, and if Mephi just doesn't make too many mistakes, big mistakes at least, he has this game in his pocket. Yeah. Because this is looking much more, much different than the previous two games, in which Fairy was having the lead all the time at the beginning, at the, at the early mid game, and the builder from Fairy just got sniped down as well from those archers. That's not gonna help. Yeah. Nice trample see. here into the goblins. I like it. And yeah. That's absolute fiesta. And imagine, guys, he has Elvin Wood right there. That would make it so much, so much worse. He will be used, though, to keep those archers alive against those spider links as they were able to get to the back line. I mean, Fairy might even be able to defend this attack. No, no, no. Fa Fairy won this fight. The fact that he had buff uh, and his opponent did not, he got a perfect flank with the spider links, even though he's going to lose all of them. Um, and just these two half trolls that can't that can't be trampled. That that was um, that was disastrous, straight up disastrous for the Elven player. Yeah, um, there was a mispositioning here. No no front line, you know, no pikemen, no swordmen to de defend against those spider links, and the horses were not in position to stop them doing what they are, what they were doing. So what happened basically is those archers they got sandwiched. There is no way of escaping. We have half troll swordmen in the front and spider links in the back. And uh, yeah, they got wiped out without being able to deal any damage. And yeah, of course, the buff advantage from, from the war chant, Rallying was on cooldown, so it helps a lot, a lot. It helps out a lot. But that's what I was talking about, you know. You need now some mistakes from Mephi, and that was one of them. And a couple mm -hmm. of more mistakes like this, and this game might actually turn around again. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, you know, the classic elven play right there is just to kind of stall and start building a forward hero statue and, and there's not a lot that the goblin could have done there but um three units of cavalry nothing to sniff at only one one uh spider link to chase them around isn't going to be able to do a whole a whole bunch yeah. but these leveled uh half trolls ex that gained experience from that last fight can do a lot of damage but it, they're getting trapped this is perfect for uh, maddie guys this is the first time ever in the in the three games now this is the third one 
that Mephi has more command points than the Goblin player Fairy, you know? And mm -hmm. normally Fairy had always, in every single game so far, a massive lead in terms of command points. So he was always able to outspam his opponent, even after taking those bad fights in which he was losing his half throws Watchman over and over again. But the resource advantage he had with the Lambert Mills, with the, with the 1000 full command points, he was always able to make use of two, three fissures and keep spamming those units. And that's gonna be a bit harder in this game as he's behind. And yeah, he's playing a bit more defensively and he needs to. Well, it's coming up in the stage for the defensive purposes. This Malone tree is gonna be gone. And cave pets are not being used, they are just in the middle of the map doing nothing. <laughs> um, oh, but those Lancers, they might be trapped here. He's gonna lose the water. Oh, never mind, actually, he's getting away. Nice trample, I like it. Yeah, the the half trolls don't don't slow them. No, don't slow yeah, them now because them. they can't be trampled. Yeah, they just the the cavalry just runs right through. Unfortunately, um, very interesting board. One thing that about this map that I don't think uh, people uh, take into consideration that does work into the favor of the goblin player is he can spam lumber mills behind his base, keep them pretty safe, uh, and just use burrows to sort of compensate for the fact that you know he's going to have some of his CP tied up. Um, he doesn't have to expand as aggressively as he does on a map like Jungles of Farhara to stay in it economically. Yeah. Um, and also kind of funny to see that even after being in a such bad spot for Fairy, he is still actually in the game and he is now look, not looking even bad. And he can still win this game actually. Glorfindel is fighting against those half throat Swordsmen. It takes a while to take them down in the whole ground stands, plus the buff from the Tainted Lands. But now he's level 3 and I mean... I'm a big fan from those half throw swordmen. They are so strong units. And mm -hmm. they can actually deal so much damage while being tanky at the same time. And the fact that you can't get trampled down by the enemy calf makes them also a great counter to the Lancers of Rivendell. And end mode is coming up now, Andy, for the Alvin player. So the siege is gonna begin soon. Yeah, and he has missed here for this this army fight. I again I, I feel like he's being a little bit too quick like if he doesn't go much deeper than he is right now like if he just stops and and waits for the end after he kills this tunnel i think that that's more to his uh more to his favor because he can just sort of set up set up his wall statue if he wants uh elven land and buff and bring bring in the the ant if he's patient and waits for the end the goblin player won't be able to do anything but yeah. almost a little patience here um money thank you so much for the follow man appreciate it and welcome to the stream Right, we have now another cave troll with the goblin, I think. He's gonna pick up a goblin, yes. Uh, Archers unprotected, I don't know about that. He doesn't have his front line where it should be. Uh, he's gonna lose this fight, and you know he has Lancers coming in, and they're gonna clean up the, the few goblins that are in this fight that are basically all dead, but the half trolls and, and the cave trolls are the thing that's gonna do work. With no archers, he's just gonna, he's just gonna win. I hope he's not gonna lose the troll, but it looks like yet the pikemen were able to damage him. He's now level 2, that means if he gets away, he will be regenerating over time. The lancers are outrunning him, boom! Nice hit on the lancers, I like it, but the troll unfortunately will be taken down. On the bright side, however, the half troll swordmen are cleaning up those pikemen, getting more and more level experience and power points. Yes, he's gonna have 10 power points collected pretty soon. Glorfindel again is the choice, he was able to take down another builder here by the way. He's level 4 now. Um, yeah, I mean, Goblin player choose the 5 power points from the spellbook. Cave Pets, Tainted Lands, Warchan. Now he has the Spider Ally special summon ready. 825 command points available for Fairy. Spiders will be used around this area to deal damage to the structures. And he's um, going for a push. This could be a really big push. It, it's interesting to see him, you know, continue to stick with the spider allies. Like, he doesn't have Azog on the field yet. Uh, if there's ever a map where you want to kind of, like, mix up your, your strategy with the goblins, it's this one. I would have, uh, you know, I'm going to speak as if I'm playing in this game, which maybe is, is a mistake because Fairy's so strong, but I would have liked to have seen a scavenger instead, and then you just go straight straight Gorkel and sort of, like, play for a, a, a long, but slow Andy. game, which... But Andy, uh, Fairy doesn't like Gorkil, my friends. Yeah, apparently he not. He doesn't like him. him. <laughs> so we, we don't, we're not going to see him any soon. Uh, and I think this ends, uh, this, you know, ends mood and the tree is a bit too early. 
Um, because he's not in a position in which he can go for a siege. He doesn't have enough units for that to protect this tree build. Yeah. I mean, if he had kept that army alive that he just lost, he yeah. would have been in position for the siege, and it would have been overwhelming. And funnily enough, you know, he throws away that army, he pushes without buff, only with only with Elven Wood as debuff. And you kind of see the same thing, where uh, Fairy, immediately in this narrow map, this, you know, uh, sort of like just head-on fight versus head-on fight, immediately pushes after winning that fight, and is throwing away his unit and cp lead um so it's it's a little bit of like uh, uh shall i say game of throws uh right now both yeah. players not not playing with enough patience nah they are just you know they wanna if they win one fight they are like okay let me push let me do my, my work but the problem is i think in a situation like this you want to play a bit more slow uh with more patience as you said and you know take those small fights small trades try to take down some of those malon trees and don't try to do many things at once. And now, <laughs> Mephi has the upper end again. He's moving forward with three builds and another end. And yeah, now it's gonna it's gonna be the case. The question is if he is gonna be able to defend this. If you don't take down take down those ends really fast, they're gonna smash your tunnels. They're gonna smash your structures from a safe dis distance, and you can't do anything about it. Look this yeah. one. two hits and one is one is down already. Yes, also on the field though, only level one. Not dealing the damage he needs to the Glorfindel, who is level 4. And Maddie Elvin has... Wood is gonna be ready, yeah. Look at this. Yeah, Maddie, Maddie has Elvin Wood this time, and again, you see Fairy going for the Strike, which he really likes in this matchup. I don't think that uh, the board, especially on this map where there's not enough room to move, I don't, I don't think that going for the Fire Drake, going for Azog, I don't think these are choices that are gonna pay off on this map. I think this game was winnable for him, but it's but with this end, I, how is he gonna break this line without a, without a Watcher? This end's gonna, go, gonna end the game, by the way. Uh, level 3 tunnel has been taken down. The Watcher is still a long way to go. Uh, Elvin Wood can be used to buff those units. Mist is gonna be ready pretty soon as well to debuff the enemy units. He has no choice but commit to that fight. He needs to commit to that. Elvin Wood will be used now. And he's gonna taint it right over it immediately. Oh, that's good. That's actually good for the Goblin player. That's really good. I like it. That means Elvin Wood is gonna got, get negated completely. Glorfindel has to be careful. He's in between. And now the goal is to take down those ants as fast as possible as they are already smashing down the fortress. Yeah, I mean, he can trample with the ants as well. Uh, I, he's he's backing up. I mean, I respect the decision to try and save these ants. It's it's definitely a, a deviation from just the kamikaze strategy he was doing earlier. Why did he use the, the Elven Wood? I think he had to use the Elven Wood because his rallying call was on cooldown. Yep, and the exactly. enemy used the war chant, so if you don't use, then you're gonna lose the fight anyway. So he was counting and hoping that he doesn't have the tainted land, which Good obviously recovery. easy to counter, right? So you need only five power points for that as the goblin faction, and elves they need ten power points. Um, but on top of that, I mean, Elvin Wood also grants you fear resistance, you know, unlike yeah. the tainted land. So which let's is not, not forget as uh, yeah, let's not forget as casters and spectators that we don't have that. Uh, the players don't have perfect knowledge of what the player has. Like, there's no way that Maddie uh, can 100% know that he has five power points in the bank. Like, he just saw him use Spiderlings. He's like, oh, maybe, you know. Yeah. He saw him uh, using the War Chant, the Cave Pads, and the Spiderlings. Maybe he's thinking, okay, maybe he doesn't have the power points. Fortress is below at 50%. He's going for the Fire Drake, but I think he's, he's not going to come out by the time. Yeah. I think it's going to be a, a little bit too little too late, but maybe the Drake is the only answer he can think of for these ends, the little bit of fire breath, but in, in a last desperate push, he's going to try and get these ends off, but he's not going to succeed. No, he's not going to be able to do that, even on the Tainted Lands. I mean, if Azog would get level 4, maybe with the Great Battle Rage he could do something, but the Fortress is just too low for that. Indeed, only two more hits needed from those two ends, and it's going to be gone. And summon as well. And GG, summon. boys. So that's going to be GG. That's going to be the fastest game of the series so far. On the map, Aaron Lair. Mephi is going to make it. Uh, make the score 2-1 in his advantage again. He's only one win away from moving to the Grand Grand Finals against Irby. Uh, and the winner of that is going to get $200. Hmm. All right. GG. Yeah, GG. <laughs> Fairy is not happy. <laughs> but now Fairy gets to choose the map. He can also switch his faction if he wants to, which I really doubt is going to happen. Uh, yeah. He has still the chance to pick Westworld. He can't pick Jungles of Fatarat anymore, guys. We take those. Game number four on the map Westworld, Engmar against Elves. Very switching from the Goblins.
So the Engmar faction. Engmar is actually quite good pick against the elves. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah. it's not automatically won because I would say that Fairy doesn't by far have the experience with the Engmar faction like he does with the Goblin faction. So yeah, let's agreed. see. Let's see what's gonna happen. We have the green Elven player Matthew on the left side against the pink Engmar player Barry on the right side on the map Westfold. What do you think about that, Andy? About this matchup and about this map? Um, I think that the matchup is is pretty fair. I, Engmar has all of the tools that it needs to to beat the elf, and in fact, if you play a certain uh, gameplay style as the elves, uh, you could. I would be to say that Engmar has the perfect counter. So, like, if you play a very ball heavy style with one army all the time and and lots of statues and just one one position engmar with sorcerers with with powers with uh, can just will we'll just straight up murder the an elf that tries to play like that but maddie has been playing with you know multiple different sort of command groups and been playing with his hero so he might not fall fall into the trap to that and i think that the map is is dead even because it's it's good for the angmar player to be able to come from lots of angles and try and overwhelm the the elf with uh uh, with extra CP, um, but all of the trees are perfect for traps and hidden Mithlon sentries, and, and yeah, so I, I think that this is 50-50 anybody's game. I feel like, you know, that Fairy has to set a bit more on the heroes, you know? That's, I think, the problem what he has. He was only, in all three games, only making Azok, while uh, the Alvin player was making a better use with his heroes, having more impact on the game. Especially in the lead scheme, we know that those those heroes they are they have so much impact, you know. And maybe mm -hmm. Waldo, early Waldo for the sport for the leadership can be a great choice, as the Alvin faction doesn't have any way to negate the leadership. And yeah. I'm pretty sure we're gonna see in the lead scheme some Dark Rangers long shot combination with the Felvins. It can also deal a lot of damage. And maybe this scheme instead of um, Glorfindel, we might also see Haldir instead. Because Haldir, once yeah. he's level 5, has the leadership. So when you have the leadership from Haldir plus the Rallying Cold buff, um, you can't actually get one-shotted from the long shots anymore. And an early creeping on the troll in the middle of the map from Mephi. Yeah. Um, it, very funnily enough, uh, Fairy wanted to scout with his ability if that is what uh, Maddie would do. I mean, it's a risky move for him to go straight for, for the cave troll. If he messes up the leash or if he gets interrupted, it can be a pretty big swing in his face. But... Uh, Tragically for Fairy, anyway, he perfectly leashed the cave troll for Maddie. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, Maddie with the perfect flank damage, no damage taken from from uh, from the troll there, um, gets a really big hundred gold lead here immediately. And then with a big double push here, oof, scary oh, moment. That's gonna be scary. And we have some wolf packs now to deal with the pikemen. Two Gandabat warriors and Warchan is ready. So is Rallying Cold. Rallying Cold will be used now. Let's see. He needs to use Warchan, but he missed the other battalion of Gandabat warriors. That's really unfortunate. Yeah, not an amazing, uh, a bad, a bad spot for Maddie to accidentally split there. The the wolves got some good good hits on here, and now he should be able to to win this fight. He perfectly separated. The wolves will eat the pike, while the Gundabads body block the warriors. Yeah. So good fight for Fairy. And the wolves are dealing so much damage actually to the pikemen, that's crazy. One of the best counters to them alongside with the swordsman, obviously. Uh, and Mephi won't be able to take down any mills, but he has still the advantage, I would say, because he was able to get the creep, he got a decent amount of power points and treasure from that. And he yeah, was also I mean, forcing Fairy to use the Warchan defensively. I mean, he's going for the second creep with the arches, but again, the version 8.3 says that you can't take down the layers anymore with arches, so he needs some reinforcements as they are coming, those Miflons. Yeah. And a stable you, is up into the Lindons again, Andy. Lindons in this matchup 100%. So you saw with that first engagement sort of a microcosm of, of the reason people like to play Angmar in this matchup, because... Elves, when you want to play all archer pike, the dire wolves counter the pike so well that um, uh, that you can sort of cut cut the elves' uh, feet out from underneath him. Um, but Maddie, knowing this, wants to go preemptively for the counter against dog spam. So uh, the, these lindens will perform well against the dire wolves, against the wolf riders, against everything. Yeah, they can um, also trample down the Gander beds, No big deal. Um, that's gonna force, if nothing else, to make him multiple pikemen. Pikemen are not gonna be the greatest counter to them because they can just disengage, shoot from a safe distance. And at the same yeah. time, Fairy is getting his second hold of the Kingsman up on the field. 
So, with that being said, and also the fact that, you know, the Elven player is creeping at the bottom left side, which is gonna give him the advantage with the signal fire, unless... Oh, maybe he will be able to interrupt that, yeah? More wolves are coming to deal with the pikemen. The Lindens are chasing. He's already successfully killed one pack of the dire wolves with the Linden the second it spawned out. Just watch how quickly he, he tears through those he, those dogs. Wow. Uh, yeah. Trading trading two dogs. Oh, wow. One just barely gets away. Yeah, but there is no way he can recover, you know. He's level one only. Uh, unless he's going to buy the banner carry upgrades, um, which I really doubt is going to happen any soon. So yeah, what's going to happen? What are you going to do with one wolf? And he just killed him <laughs> with the archers, yeah. so... <laughs> <laughs> um, at the same time, Fairy was able to creep the work layer around the signal fire at the top right side. Um, two Hall of the Kingsmen now, and yeah, this game is looking good for the Elven player so far. He has the unit advantage, Engma has a bit more command points available. The only good thing here for the Engma player Fairy is actually the fact that, you know, again, Matthew doesn't have anything to take down structures. Yep. That's the only good thing about it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and Matty has opting to play really, really lean up until now. I mean, only four units on the entire map for him, and you know, Fairy has lost at least that many, and is and is trying to you know get a little bit of an eco boost, creeping two wargs in a row. Um, one thing that he can do is if he has a a really well timed um, Qualdar, if he doesn't lose too many troops in like the next three minutes, and can get Qualdar out and be max CP, he can do a big push that might be able to break the Elven players back. But the longer that this game goes on. Uh, with the Lindens dealing really well preemptively with any kind of dog spam coming from the Angmar player. Yeah, it, it narrow window for the Angmar to kind of come back, I think. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, li I like those horse archers here from the Alvin faction. They are, for me, similar like to the battle wagons, you know, when they have the men of deal. Um, because you can make a choice if you want to go for a trample, which again will still one shot those Gandabat warriors if you are in the aggressive stance. If they are mm -hmm. not using the old ground stance, so the trample damage is going to be very good again. But also, you can even take down some of those pikemen, you know, by using the range attack. But it looks like he's gonna be now surrounded, so that's the way to go for Fairy. He needs to attack from multiple sides at once. And mm -hmm. force the Elven player to split his army, and one Malon tree has been taken down already. Um, I don't know if I like the third Linden. Um... I don't like it as well. I would like to see more archers now at this point, or more you know, infantry units. Yeah, he's hovering around uh, 800 gold. If he doesn't buy that third Linden, he has hauled deer before, right before this push comes out, I feel. Yeah. Um, or at least, like, right now. And that, oh. I think, is a much better position for him than having these three Lindens, which, like, you know, Fairy, in a way, is almost like, okay, well, you've made my dogs useless, but you, but if you build too many Lindens, then I can just sort of, like, overpower you with Qualdar and strong unit factions. And, and again, like, he, you know, killing these trees, trying to CP lock his his opponent. It's not a bad board state for... Uh, it's not a bad board for Fairy, though he went Snow Trolls? Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> snow Trolls are here. Uh, I like them a lot, but I don't think they are, are gonna be a great choice against the three battalions of Linden Horse Archers. Why? <laughs> why, why do you go Snow Trolls when he has, when he has Lindens? Uh, wow, that's crazy. Mm. Um... Maybe he wanna, you know, have something to trample down the archers because he has barely any pikemen on the field. So if he can, you know, take them down, it's I think not bad at all. And Fairy has again a beautiful advantage in terms of command points, though. Power mm -hmm. point wise, it's also quite even. Felwind is gonna be available. So with the Felwind, if he's gonna stay grouped with those horse archers, he can maybe do something. What if the man? I, I don't think I've ever actually seen Snow Trolls versus Lindens. Uh, I, I'm I'm curious now. Maybe Fairy knows something I don't. This seems very foolish, but this might be a really good trample here. He's definitely yeah. going to kill these two. That's what three. I meant. Oh, you know, that's what I meant. Look at this. Oh, he's getting blocked. Felvin will be used. Beautiful. Nice one. Oh my god. Oh my god. This look. The horse arts are dying like flies. Wow. Wow. What a win. That's almost game right there. Lost well, almost yeah. everything. Uh, what a great wind. Yes, only one horse archer left, by the way, boys. Oh, no. I, oh, that's I was wrong. He's a genius. Fiesta. Did you guys see what happened there? Because, you know, Matthew wanted to block those snow trolls and protect his archers. That's, you know, forced him to group with all of his units. And the Felvins, you know, knocked them all down. That, that the pikemen could have killed almost every single horse archer he had on the field. That's crazy. Only one battalion is alive. And they cost so much. They cost 500 each. 
And they give so that much power awesome. points if you kill them. <laughs> that was awesome. No. Um, how much happier would would fair or uh, would Maddie be if instead of that one horse archer though he has like Haldir or or it's saved to a hero though maybe he, the hero just dies there too and it's even worse. Um, I'll see Alfna. Thank you so much for the for, for the sub, my friends. Subscribed. Welcome to Beyond Standards Crew. Thank you so much for the for the sub. It really means a lot to me. I really appreciate it. And welcome to Beyond Standards Crew. The best right. crew on Twitter. Let's see, let's see, Andy, what's gonna happen now? Big Warchan plays incoming, Snow Trolls, Pikemen, Gundabats, Wolf Packs. What else you need to win this game? If this is if this is well microed, then Fairy can win right here. There is, we have Haldir on the map. Um, man, that Felwyn was so awesome. The Felwyn was actually game changing right there. Uh, let's see. I mean, you know, I. The Elven player doesn't have a buff here. Um, getting a little too far away from the maps. What a good trample. Oh, oh wow. What and a you fantastic was, You was doubting those snow trolls from Fairy. How dare you? <laughs> I know. What a fool. See, see, another moment where obviously there's a reason why Fairy is in this match and I'm sitting here. I mean, I, I was the one that hosted the tournament, but I, I, I played Clan Wars all month and I didn't get close to top eight, so to, hats off. And he, by the way, just lost his last battalion of those horse archers to the snow trolls. And snow trolls, oh, Haldir is here, but Haldir is the last man standing. Holy moly, guys, it's gonna be game number five. And remember, in the game number five, Mephi gets to choose the map. But we have seen now in this game that Fairy isn't only able to play goblins, he can also play Angmar. And that's scary. Wow. That's scary. In the game number five, the final game, which is gonna decide if you get only $50 or at least $100 with a potential chance of $200 in total, is all about to begin, guys. Holy moly. The final Fairy game. Is the tiebreaker is beginning, Andy. Engmar against Elves on Sakura Forest. What are your expectations about that? I expect a similar early game. I, uh, I, as far as like the first three minutes, I, you know, I, I would very much expect Maddie to try and creep again. Though I would love to see the classic uh, Lorian Warrior single rally call push. That can be hard for one gun to bed to deal with, especially on a short map. I think that if there's a time to deviate from his creep open, now's the time to do it. But I don't think he's going to deviate. Um, and the whole thing is going to be that now that Maddie. Uh, is aware of how easy uh, it can swing off of the Felwyn. I just expect, like, from a micro perspective, him to be more careful to protect his pikes a little, uh, to protect his archers a little bit better with pikes, so that he isn't forced to use his cavalry to body block. And uh, yeah, and I hope, I hope he still goes at least one Linden because I think that that's really clever. All right, guys. So uh, you know we have we're gonna have actually similar stuff for for both the players. Uh, early barracks for the Alvin player Mephi at, at the bottom right side, but also for the pink Engma player Fairy at the top left side. It's gonna be a mill into the Hall of the Kingsmen start, and a barracks a Malon tree into the barracks starts here for the Alvin player. So it's pretty similar start. I'm assuming they're both gonna aim for the creeps. The, the set uh, the waypoint already sets here. It will work there. From the Alvin player and the Engma player is gonna potentially go for the creep. That is the waypoint. So it's gonna be similar. They're both gonna be able to creep uncontested, most likely. And I think the plan is simple. So I'm assuming it's gonna be the you know it's gonna be like a mirror matchup in which both players are gonna push forward with a Gunzabat warrior and Pikeman for the Engma player and with a Lorian warrior and the Pikeman for the Alvin player. Mm hmm. But I would say that the push from the Alvin player, if it's not going to be defended, will deal a bit more damage. Because by the time you arrive here with your Gundabad Warriors and Pikemen, Alvin player will have Arches to defend himself. You might still be able to take down one of those Malon trees, but if you leave your sides open as Engma player, I think this attack will be a bit more successful. What do you think from the Alvin player? Yeah, I think that on a, on a map, uh as tight as this i think that defender as you described there is a bit of a defender's advantage though fairy really intelligently has been using his builders to scout it, you know, knows that exactly where uh maddie maddie is creeping um i i'm interested to see both both players creeping they, they might both go for two wargs um or there might even be the first fight over this warg in the center um 
Meffy, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm always saying Meffy. <laughs> Metty, Metties, Metties. <laughs> Twitch chat is oh. making fun of me. <laughs> Meffy. <Hey. laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, okay, they are moving actually. He's gonna be unseen now. Let me check the vision control from the Arvin player. He sees wow. them now. He also used the war chant off screen so he doesn't see them being buffed, unlike us. And mm -hmm. it looks like the Arvin player is just gonna ignore that and gonna, vo gonna go for a push by himself. He's gonna lose a builder. He might lose too. He's not paying oh, attention. Oh, the build has been taken down from Matthias. <laughs> The fact that he found that he decided to go down there, not opt for the creep, but but push there. Um, like we talked about defender's advantage, but there's no defender's advantage if you can completely avoid uh, your opponent's force like he did. He's going to get two. He might even get three. He's got, oh, doesn't get the clump on uh, uh, protected. And it looks like Maddie is going to all in him. We might have a bit of like a, a base race, base trade here as he's going to commit his rally call in the north. But He needs to get extra words here, by the way, in my opinion. Um, it's gonna yeah, Axe just body black while you buy time for more troops could be good. Yeah. He kills the thrall before it comes out. Oh boy. He's oh. gonna get the, he's gonna get that all. Uh oh, he killed the thrall master before he was able to transmute, uh, transform to the Gundabad warriors, by the way, guys. That's Fiesta, the Hall of the Kingsman is down. Yeah, first unit of Dire Wolves, no buff though. These these uh, Elven units are going to have their way with this base. That, that's what um, I was saying you know, at the beginning, right? So I oh, think yeah. the Elven attack will be a bit more successful because unlike, you know, these units are not very good to defense, unlike the Archers. Archers were able to defend themselves. I mean, the Builder was blocking this Malone tree, so he only lost two Malone trees, but I mean, and a Builder. So the push from Engma was great. Taking two Malone trees down and a Builder is always nice. But Offs. taking down the first mill in the Hall of the Kingsman is even more massive, in my opinion. Oh yeah, uh, very, very big counter push. I, I think that this is definitely favoring that elf. And off screen, while Fairy was defending his base, he lost a full gun to bed to the middle warg pit, uh, the oh. warg snipe thrall master. Oh, that's really bad, man. Unfortunately for Fairy, Fairy's I mean, gonna be forced into wolf riders to not lose this game um and that is not ideal for him be because it's quite a big uh, economic um commitment um, but yeah he's gonna have to he's gonna have to go wolf rider and there are mirrors allowed in this tournament so can you pick the same faction like your opening does yes 100 percent. okay so um you know i'm just thinking about what's gonna happen in the finals if matt is gonna win yeah. Uh, will Irby pick Elves also? What do you think? <laughs> Elven Mirrors, like, five games. <laughs> yeah, so I, I talked about, um, you know, Fairy is playing because he wants a rematch against Irby because they played a really exciting best of five in uh, in the winner's finals. But Irby is also the person that sent Maddie to loser's finals. So Irby and Maddie have already played. And and what Irby did was he picked... Was he picked... Uh, he picked Isengard. He went straight to Sakura Forest uh, on the first map, if I remember right, um, which was curious to everybody, and and basically just played uh, like mirror troops and and just managed to overpower Maddie with with just an Isengard push, it's similar to what C Knight tried to do, but much more successfully. And on the rematch, uh, Maddie didn't understand the rules and so switched to men of the west and tried to play on air and lair and got overwhelmed again uh, men of the west versus eisen so i expect isengard i expect erby to play isengard if he has to play against uh maddie okay i mean this game is looking very good right now for the album player maddie though i mean yeah. it, look at this engma has 250 command points on he has a single mill left here with the no top right side that's it yeah and he has almost no money, so he, he needs to invest all his money right now to make another mill. Um, on the other side, we have 450 command points available for the Elven player. He didn't lose the barracks, his Malone tree is all about to hit level 2. That means his command points are gonna be even more effective, more resource income. And he has the unit advantage. He has also Haldir on the field. Um, and this game might be the fastest game in the series so far. Yeah, uh, Fairy, Fairy needed to do a lot of work with that one wolf rider, and it was looking really good, and then he tragically managed to trample what was genuinely just like one row of Mithlon sentries left and lost almost the whole battalion. That that right there, 
on top of the really heads up early game from Maddie Smirks, you know, and losing that gun to bed to that work, this is going to be really, really hard. He's going to have to have an even better fell wind uh, comeback. Um, yeah. Not that it was, but an even better fell wind than last game. I mean, I'm kind of feeling bad for Fairy, not gonna lie, because he likes to play with goblins, but, you know, goblins are really struggling against elves. He even managed to win the game number two on the map, Jungles mm -hmm. of Fararat. The game number one, could he could have won this game also. The game number three was not even that close. Um, he had a great game in the previous map, Westfold, with the Angma faction against elves. That was one of the most beautiful uh, Velvins I've seen so far. But this game is looking even worse, so... I mean, again, we are in a situation like on the map Eren Lair, you know, in which you're not gonna only be forced to perform really great, but you also need to rely on the mistakes Mephi is gonna do. And we have seen also in the series so far, both players tend to make mistakes. And, you know, I think if Mephi is not gonna make any big mistake, he has to scare yeah. his pocket. Yeah, you can see Maddie feeling uh, victory, like he can feel it so close, opting for this hero statue in the middle. The first forward hero statue we've seen in this whole series, he does not want to lose this game after having this lead. I think he's going to play this very slow. He's going to play it calculated. He doesn't want to give Fairy any room to to come back. Um, yeah. And whoever wins this game, by the way, guys, is going to have guaranteed one on the others. So regardless what's going to happen in the finals between Irby and the winner of the series, if, for example, Matt is going to win this game and it's looking like this, he's going to have at least $100 cash prize, which is great. And the loser is also getting something, so $50, you know, either for uh, Fairy or for Matt's. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know Fairy is going to fight until the very end, so he's not going to give up any soon, especially not in a tournament like this. But... He does have he does have buff and fell wind here. Uh, this is... A little surprising for me that that Maddie is sort of invading here. I uh, I expected even slower style, like maybe even like waiting for the forward end end move before he even commits to this push. There is a world where uh, where with perfect micro the Angmar player can win here. One of the great strengths of Angmar is their ability to deal with situations like this. Um, we'll just have to wait and see, man. But oof, I'm on the edge. But what's happening here right now? <laughs> He's just camping there and doing nothing else. But I mean. He's using the trees to get stealthed with those archers. But then again, he needs to keep one of those pikemen at least with the archers to protect them against the wolf riders. Oh um, no. Pelvin, Trample he... could be a thing, maybe? I just hope that Fairy doesn't fall into the trap of trying to trample stealth uh, Mithlon sentries. I think we've all lost a game or two to that. Um, uh, oof, doesn't. Okay. Watch the Felwind. If he can perfectly pull the one myth wand here, he can win this fight. Oh, okay, that's what's the best. Oh, he's trampling anyway. Nice trample action, not bad. Oh, good trample. Oh, nice one. Nice one. He's not getting punished for that. He didn't lose a single Wolf Rider just yet. He was used to high this leveling up. There's still a lot of archers on the fields. Buff is gone for both the players. Extroverts are not the best against the archers, especially when there is Hydra in the back. Uh, and, you know, during this fight, he's getting more reinforcements through the middle. He has double barracks. He has the money he needs. Tower in the middle. He's not losing this game. Matty is saying, I am not going to lose this game. He's going to be uh, able to take down the Dean as well. Haldir is leveling up. He's going to be really close to level 5, which is going to be the major power spike with the leadership. Engmar, again, doesn't have a way to negate the leadership. It means those units, they're going to be even stronger. Um, he was also able to scout this um, mill there with the builder. Um, yeah. This mill is all about hit level, too, so he should be able to take it down uncontested. He's using snowbinds on this level 1 mill, protected. Yeah, he has to, um, but it, this is looking pretty grim for Fairy, uh, putting up a, a great series. But yeah, uh, Maddie, Maddie, Maddie just... just you know, closing in the vice, taking over the map, taking his time, gonna choke him out with uh, these three entry entryways. Um. I think the early game was the deciding thing, you know. Um, yeah, it snowballed from yeah. this moment when he killed uh, all of the Kingsmen and he killed the Gandabad warrior before yeah. you know, he was able to get them on the field. Um, yeah. Even though the start was not even looking that bad for Fairy, let's be honest, he was able to snipe down the builder. 
mm-hmm. was able to take down two Malon trees. But that's what I yep. meant. You you can't leave your sides open uh, against elves. You can't. Yeah, you were you called it, Shanks. Um, I mean, at this point, Matty can do whatever he wants. And uh, the easiest way to win this one is gonna be a forward end mood, mm-hmm. which is not happening right now. I mean, you kind of gonna need end mood to finish the fortress again. This is look, he's camping right in front of the Allah the Kingsman. That means every time when the units are gonna come out, they're gonna get sniped down from those archers. Glorfindel is out. It's it's funny that he goes uh, Elven Mist almost out of habit. He could have ended the game with just lots of melee units and and. Uh, yeah, and an elf would push, but again, I I just think he's like I'm not going to throw this game away. I'm not, you know, I'm going to do everything the safe way. I'm gonna go slow. I'm gonna make sure I do my due diligence. I'm gonna dot my eyes, cross my T's. Um, oh, here comes a rally call push. Okay, the whole of the Kingsman is gonna go down in a second and a half. They have now the leadership from Haldi. They see level five boys, double buff. Double. Um, and yeah, Glorfindel is in the back trying to snipe down the mills, the three, four mills he has left. And Hualdo is here though for the spot, for the double buff for the Engmar player. But he has not the units to deal with that much army. And Fairy is gonna call it GG. Interesting and entertaining series so far, guys. And Matty is gonna make it to the grand finals and will be facing against Irvi in the best of five. Yeah. And congratulations to Fairy, right? So he still won $50. Yeah. He still won fifty dollars, and man, he played a great, a great tournament. He played a great tournament. Um, he, in the last day of first, he played twenty-one matches to just barely qualify for it. Uh, had a low seed, so had to go through killers. Playing C Knight of Aya in a, you know, it goes all the way to three games in his first set. Plays, uh, you know, I, I think every single one of his matches has gone to the max amount of games. He played May Shadowfax. It goes to three. It went to three. Then he played Irby in winners finals. Made that go all the way to five games. Playing a close set against uh, Irby, and then another all the way five. So th- this man has played so many games and has given us so many entertaining series. So yeah, big hats off to Fairy. Fantastic That's so player. That's so true. And he well deserved the victory here, definitely. <clears throat> and mm. yeah, Matty is going to be in the finals. I mean, Fairy did a really great job. I mean, to be honest, you know, playing with goblins over and over again against elves. And I think he's just going to regret the game number one the most, you know? This is going to be the yeah. game he could have... If he would have won the game number one, he would be in the finals now against Irby. I think you're 100% right about that. And man, was that game ever on a knife's edge. Um yeah. One of the most entertaining games I have seen in years, to be honest with you. Back and forth um, yeah. game all the time, you know. <laughs> was fun though, was really fun to to see. Guys, um, that's gonna be it for today from me. It's Mother's Day, so if you have a mother, say Happy Mother's Day from me as well. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching, and Andy, thank you so much for the co-cast. Yeah, I'm just gonna thank you now. so much. Yeah, I appreciate, I appreciate uh, the stream. Shanks, you're the best. Uh, have a good day. And guys, if you're watching that over at Twitch right now, please make sure to follow the stream for more content like this in the future. And if you're watching that over at YouTube, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. It really helps. And subscribe for more content. See you very soon again. We're going to rate Velenorion now. He's going to be happy. And see you soon again, guys. Peace.